Sports. I'm Yitzin. Welcome back to Hydroneer. We are going to fire straight into subscribe right here, and we are going to see what the automation in Volcalidus actually entails. I think by the end of this, we'll be able to have some kind of sorting system because we'll have an ice melter. We'll have lots and lots of money, essentially, to, to build a bunch of different really, really cool things. But we need to find a decent and reliable source of the Prospecting Guild tokens that I think we are supposed to be using to build a bunch of other stuff. All right, here we are. So in the last episode, we just got a pickaxe and we are about to do possibly one of my favorite tasks in this game, which is mining out a little recess to get to the bottom of the level so that we can get ourselves the best ores in the game. We'll get lots and lots of these. We'll get a sorting system set up for them. Uh, we'll pump them out topside as well. So we don't have to use that really yucky hand sorter that we, um, that we have that just kind of like spews all of the resources all over the ground like a, um, a child who, who doesn't want to eat the meal you've just given it. Cool. So we're going to bust our way through here. This is essentially Minecraft. We did just play Minecraft. I think I just lost my fourth world due to probably the worst jump scare I've ever had. We uh, got attacked by an Enderman. And this Enderman harassed us inside of a cave. And I just got out with minimal health left out of the cave into the sunlight. And I seem to remember that Endermen, they don't like sunlight. So they kind of like stay away from the sun. They kind of like run away. But I turned around to look in the cave and this Enderman just it literally ran at me and killed me in one hit. Scared the crap out of me. What an asshole. An actual asshole. Okay, we'll mine all of this out. We're kind of at the flat -er land now. We'll uh, kind of like mine out a little bit deeper into this cavern. And then we'll make a big old pocket. Because we... I did look it up. I did look it up. There are vehicles in this game that allow you to dig into the ice. Unfortunately, they're only available on Mott's Island. Which we need uh, quite a substantial amount of hardstone to be able to access. Which is why we set up those hand sorters in the first place. What we've got now is a little pocket that we are going to set up all of our machinery and hopefully we can go around exploring, maybe find those last like six bones for the dinosaur statue that we have been uh, working on as well. Or at least kind of like figure out something else to do while we wait for the machines to basically pump out a bunch of uh, really, really high tier resources down here in the lower levels. Okay, good. Now, I kind of also do like the idea of putting the grinder at the end of a conveyor system so that all of the machines down here can go one block lower and thus get more resources. But that would also require us to have some kind of uh, water flow system set up. And we also need the tokens to be able to buy the conveyors, which is a real pain in the ass, honestly. All right, good. Got a, a, a pretty sizable little cavern mined out here. Probably also going to need some more lava pipes too. I don't really know how big this cavern is that we've mined out because the, the white against the white is actually kind of hard to see. I'm going to have to move side to side to use peripheral vision. I guess you could, you could see it as. Okay, so we probably don't want these machines still running, which is good because they've both broken. Excellent. Let's go ahead and start setting these up. We're probably going to need to get the muncher down there first, aren't we? Muncher is probably most important right here. Let's get this muncher. And it pipes in from behind, which is really helpful, I think. Yes, it definitely pipes in from behind. Why can't I place that there? I can place it there. All right, so we want to start sticking the machinery basically facing into this here. Then we want a bucket at the front of this too. Maybe we turn this around, actually. Like, here? No? Why can't we put it in that one spot? That's the one spot we actually want it in. Okay, we'll face it in from that direction. This one here. It's a crap grinder, but it can go basically here sideways. Good, it's got enough room for that. We're probably going to need to pick out a bit more to make room for the second grinder. We probably actually pipe in all three grinders, to be quite honest. I've never seen this game before. It's really fun. It's probably the best kind of like puzzle strategy game that I have ever seen. It's called Hydroneer. It's really good. Uh, the idea is basically you get all of these kind of mining worlds in a sandbox environment and you kind of like create these gigantic mechanical monstrosities to automate all of the harvesting of the resources from the mines. And then you snowball in wealth, which means you can buy bigger mechanical monstrosities. But it's also a puzzle in the sense that you kind of have to set up all of the workflow yourself as well, all of the automation. Like there's lots and lots of automation chains and stuff. Imagine Satisfactory, but there was way more micromanagement involved. Satisfactory? Yeah, Satisfactory. 
I was, uh, I always get them confused with the uh, Factorio. Right. That's probably enough room to stick a machine in right there. So let's go ahead and dump this on the floor in case we need it again. And we'll get the other one. Right here. Excellent. This one's got a bit of a speed bonus, which is pretty nice. Let's go ahead and bring it in towards us a little bit. That is almost perfect. So we need it to dump out basically here. Let's go back here and get that little concrete podium that we had. We'll stick that right here. We also want it to be rounded so that we can kind of like gauge distance if we need to put more things in there. Here is all of our resources so far. I'm going to drop this right here. Yeah, I think that should be good. Actually, it kind of like spews out a little bit harder than the other one. So we probably want to make it a little bit further away from the machine than usual. Awesome. So now we need to pipe all of this in, don't we? So we need that to be piped in. We need that piped in. We can probably just uh, mine straight up from here, to be quite honest, and then pipe in from above. And the reason I have the machines facing outwards and not inwards towards the mine is because we probably also want to set up a few more little machines kind of going into the mine, and we don't want to walk too far to get the resource bucket. Because by the time we've automated the resource bucket, we won't be needing anything um, down south side, I think. We'll basically have all the resources uh, dragged up top. Okay, let's get our pickaxe right here. We'll mine out all of this crap right here. And awesome. Now that we've done that, we will grab these here little elbows and we'll hook them into the back of these machines. Right there, perfect. And get another one down here, hooked in like so. Yep, that's definitely perfect. And we'll get another couple of these pipes down here as one, like so. Good. And one more right there before we start hooking it in from above. Probably want to put a couple of T-junctions in here, don't we? We want a T-junction coming in from up top, and we probably want one to go straight downwards into the grinder as well. So let's go here and start piping these in to each other. I'm going to put a straight pipe there, and then the next one's going to be a T-junction right in between them. Right here, perfect. This may even be the same kind of workflow that we had in the last... In the last little uh, piece of machinery that we had. Uh, no, it was not. Okay. T-junction right here. Let's go ahead and stick this one facing downwards. Because we're going to elbow this one into the grinder right there. Let's get two elbows. Because we need two elbows. One right here can go at the end of this like so. And we need another two elbows. One right here. Perfect. We'll whack this one facing in that away, and then we need another elbow to connect those two elbows up. Hopefully we've got another elbow. It doesn't actually look like we do. We're probably going to have to go and buy another few elbows, it seems, if that's the case. And we're probably also going to need a bunch of straights too. So let's go ahead and go and get those. Straights and elbows, that's all we need. Let's go uh, out, and we're driving all the way to the shop. We're probably pretty low on money at the shop by now, but at this point, it's not too much of a worry because we can always make another trip to the jeweler and just get more cash. At this point, we're probably more worried about the crafting because that's the only chokehold that we have. A lot of crafting in this game, by the way. It's not like um, inventory crafting either. You know how like Ark Survival Evolves has, uh, has inventory-based crafting? And it, it's always time-gated, and all of the crafting in the game is time-gated. All, all of the stuff that you use at the workbenches and such, it's all time-gated. And Power World as well, and Conan Exiles, they're all time-gated. Well, in this one, you just have to go to the location and have the resources on you. That's pretty much all you need. Let's go ahead, leave the truck, and we'll see how much we can buy. Maybe we don't have any money on us. No, we don't, actually. We don't have any money on us, unless it's in the back of the ute. Okay, we're going to have to go and sell our haul to the jeweler, I think. It's not like the machine's up and running anyway, so it, it doesn't really make too much a difference to me. All right, I'll come all the way around here. I still love that volcano so much. Yeah, we're getting to mid-game. Mid-game is actually really cool. Uh, it's probably my favorite part of the game. I don't really like end-game too much because it's just like spam crafting. But mid-game is definitely worth it. Okay, so we'll go and get our bucket. We'll go over to the Lumberton Jeweler, we'll sell it, and then we'll go back and we'll go and get some pipes. I've got an itchy nose today. Got a nose like G-Easy. 
Okay, let's uh, come out here and I'm just going to drop... No, I can't drop down that hole because it's blocked up by pipes hilariously. We'll come down here and we want to take this bucket right here. Nice. We'll grab this bucket of goodies and we'll go to the jeweler. I think we've got a couple of repair kits already lying around. We probably don't need to get any more of them. So we just won't. Let's do a little bit of a turn around and we'll go down here. Even though I know we haven't really min-maxed our journey, our path, our path, our journey. We'll come all the way down here. I still don't know what we pick these things up with. These gigantic rocks. Probably not really going to be worth it once we set up the machinery, though. Because you get all, you got to get all the way to the Moat's Island to, to do that. I'm also calling him Moat. I hope that's his name. Alright, we'll come around here and... Here is the location. We'll just sell this off at the nearest jeweler. We'll back in and we will scare the ever-loving crap out of him. Right here. Hello there, sir. I'm, I'm backing in. Boom. Done. Whoops. That is an ore. We don't want to pick that up. What do you give me for this? 1,500 bucks? That's a pittance, but I suppose thank you. What about this one piece of gold? Oh, generous. 11 bucks. I think he's probably paying a premium for gold and jewels, and that's about it. He doesn't sell any tickets, you dunce. Yep, I forgot to uh, turn the game volume up. Here we go. Done. That should be significantly better. Excellent. Right, so now we'll take this money all the way over to the store. We'll buy a bunch more piping, and we should have automation basically set up and running. We probably need some water filter hooks, but or lava filter hooks, actually, in this DLC they'd probably be called. But at the same time, it's also probably a little bit overkill to be putting that on three machines. And then we need a bunch of logic stuff. It's probably not terribly worth it. We probably want to get ourselves a cart before we want to think about that kind of stuff. Ah, nice and night time. Very good. Okay, so... Oh, just in case anybody's wondering why I keep flip-flopping in the games that I play, I quite like to uh, play a variety of games across an entire stream. And that breaks up the VODs into kind of like one or two hour chunks, which allows people who are watching them in the future to uh, kind of not get too fatigued with the videos. Okay, pushing through here. And the giant bubble is around the city. Uh, we don't care about that too much. What we just want are the pipes. Give me some pipes. Give me 1600 bucks worth of pipes, please. Lots and lots of pipes. Drop that right there. Let's go ahead and get uh, a bunch of these straights. We're going to need heaps of them. Probably, I don't want to say 10, but we're probably realistically going to need 10. 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7, and 8, and 9. And ten. Okay, that should be enough. We'll get two elbows as well, because we need two elbows. We need one to hook up the grinder. We also need another one to hook up the... Junction. We, we're going to have a junction. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll drop that there. Perfect. Go ahead and throw this onto the back of the truck as well. Beautiful. Throw that there. What else we got? Got this uh, beautiful straight one. We've got mostly beautiful straight ones, honestly. Okay, let's actually throw this into the back of the truck, and then we'll go ahead and drive the truck. We'll back it in, so we don't have to kind of, like, run them individually to the truck. Because the more time we spend without any of the machines enabled, the less money we are making at any given time. That one goes in, that one goes in, that one goes in. This is way faster. That one goes in, that one goes in, that one goes in. Probably a little bit too far away from these two, so I'll, I'll just ferry them in myself. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. And we'll grab this one, and we'll throw it in the bag. Nice. Okay, that should be enough. That should be all we need to set up the automation from the bottom of the mine. This should also realistically be the last time that we need to use the mine that we have. We could probably actually migrate to a different mine entirely. When we can afford to do so. We're probably going to need to actually, you know, get, it, get enough resources to be able to sell to get to a different location, but... That's what we're fixing. That's we are, what we are literally fixing right this second. Okay. So we'll come up here. Gorgeous. We've made a bit of a mess, but ultimately this is probably the the smallest mess we've ever made. Okay, drop that down. Uh, let's start hooking up all of these machines right here. 
like that goes there for example this one should go here good this one can go down here what the hell is that what are these oh i think they're like chunks they were supposed to go into the top of the grinder but they didn't uh we need an elbow here because that's the height at which the outtake seems to be at all right where is it i think i saw one right there good let's put this right here Good, and we'll start piping in all of these pipes that we've already got set up. That there, good. Put this one there, excellent. Put this one over here, and then we're gonna need to start getting the truck involved, aren't we? So let's get on the truck, and we will kind of like back it in, so we've got good access to it, I suppose. Uh, or we could just run the truck into all of the machinery that we just bought, which is probably not amazing. It goes there. That can go there, this one can go there, this one can go here, nice. Uh, we're kind of blocking in the the path that we need to take to go downwards, but I think it's fine. Put that one there. I think we've got just enough lava pipes to kind of get us to the edge there. Got an elbow. And we got one more straight. Yeah, so we're, actually, we're very close. I don't want to have to go back to the shop. We do have another straight just over here that we're not using. Let's go ahead and grab this one and stick it on the edge there and hopefully this is just gonna reach the lava from like here is it yes great okay we've used literally all of the pipes available to us to get this uh, kind of small tiny bit of automation working all right that's all piped in uh there's one here that isn't piped in and now it is wonderful okay so let's go ahead we'll grab these three little chunks where were they they're kind of like floating in the sky somewhere, weren't they? There they are. And we'll put them in the grinder, and then we'll repair it. We also need to put a bucket under it as well. Whoops. Don't think I dropped that in the right spot. Okay, grab this one too. Drop that just there. Hopefully it rolls down. Yep, it rolled down. Perfect. Uh, and throw that there. Good. Where'd the other one go? There it is. Go ahead and throw this one into the grinder. Whoop. There we go. And now we are going to fix them all up when I find wherever the goddamn repair kits are. Here's one. This one's full. Let's just use this one. Boop. Now, I don't want to activate it before I've got a bucket down. So let's go ahead and grab a bucket. And then we'll come down here. We'll place it in front of here, slightly further away from the machine than close. And this should be absolutely fine. Now, if we repair these two machines. Ah, my kit. It's gone. Do we have another one? Yeah, we do. It's right there. Okay, good. Uh, we'll fix... This one, I think, is broken. And we'll just leave this down here, because that's where we're going to need it. Now, we need to shovel some snow into the bums of these two little doodads right here. Let's take this right here, and I'll shove it right in the bum there. That should be grinding. Excellent. We've already got ore generation. Perfect. Wow, there's a huge chunks, actually. So we need a huge block of iron, don't we? To, to kind of like hand in a couple of quests. Like this one right here is gorgeous. Nice, we got two of them. So that's two quests. Basically polished off. That one can go in there. Any more iron? Yes, right there. Let's go hand in both of these quests to these two people that we said we'd do the quests for like seven days ago. I thought we could do it immediately. Oh, damn it. We did have another straight pipe. Got a couple of straight pipes. Damn it. Oh, well. Better to have more than less. Excess is best. Excess is best practice. Unless you're eating. In which case, maybe moderate that. Okay, we'll come down here. Finally! We've got in-game ores generating. Can we believe it? Already! Only 20 minutes into the, um, into the video as well. It's pretty good. I'm very happy with that. Thank you, game. Thank you for the endorphins. Let's go through here. And we are going to... What are we going to do? We, we're just going to hand in these quests, I think. And only the quests. I don't think we're going to get any of those crappy coins in exchange either. I think we're actually going to get good tokens. This guy definitely requires one of these huge chunks of iron. Here you go, sir. I have a gift for you. Give me this and I'll give you my Here you tokens. go. Enjoy. What have you got? Thanks. Tokens. Well Thank served. you very much. Ooh, they are new. Perfect. So this is what we use to kind of get ourselves the automation with the conveyor system. Great. So now that that's generating, there was someone else. There was some other dunce around here who also wanted 
I think it's her. It's this lady. This lady right here also wanted a brick of iron. Hey, here you go. Something specific. Enjoy. Thank you. No, thank you. Good, we got a hundred bucks now. Awesome. I just got, uh, I delivered 10 weapon requests. What? Why did they think that they were weapons? Are they using those hunks of iron to kill each other? Is that actually what's happening? We all saw that, right? I just got an achievement? Creepy. Okay. So, we're done here. Now, Rice, uh, probably want to maybe check out the tiers of the shops. Because I know that we can craft... We have crafted one of them, and we can craft two more. So, what have we got here? We've got the lava drills. We can actually pack out the mine that we have with these lava drills. I think that that takes Cloutium, which is kind of expensive, but... If we need it, we need it. What about, like, a conveyor system? Where do we find that? I think there was, like, a another little town kind of off to the side of this place, right? That only takes those tokens? All right, this is the main entrance, the main thoroughfare. Where are we? We are... Where are we? We're at New Glade. So we want to go... Essentially... Kind of hard to say, actually. I think we just go uh, forward and right from here. And then we'll find the place that we are probably thinking of, which is the place that sells all of the conveyor systems. Oh, I never noticed all the steam of the magma going into the water there. That's cool. I like that. It's really cool. Right, it's probably around this way. I have found a mining location. It's kind of crap. I wonder, it's probably got a really, really deep yield. But it's a really crap location. Water side. Yeah, I can see that. Yuck. More like piss side. Okay, I, I'm feeling lucky with this direction over here. I feel like the place we're after is probably just just over here and over that hill right there. Okay, we've got a, a couple of bridges over there. Still keeping an eye out for bones as well, which I'm not seeing. I haven't been looking inside of the rivers, so that's where I'm turning my eyes towards now. We'll keep... Yeah, this is definitely where we want to be. There's the token on the building right there. That's exactly uh, what we're here for. So conveyor systems, what do these cost? They cost, this one costs 220 bucks, just flat out. Oh, this one's tokens, this one's money. Right, so we can set up a sorting system basically right now. Conveys water. Okay, so we've got water pressure systems. I don't think we've got a water intake here. Got a sled cart. Probably want to start getting lots and lots of money together then, if we are going to be uh, getting a nice sorting system up and running. We can do that. We can definitely do that. Uh, we're probably really low on fuel in this car as well, because we haven't filled it up in a long time. But it should be fine until we get home at least. Let's just drive towards the volcano. I'm pretty sure that if we just go towards the volcano, we're going to find our base regardless of which direction we approach it from. Because that is our base. We also know that uh, we're on the wrong side of the volcano as well. This road sucks. We know we're on the wrong side of the volcano simply because we can't see the path that goes up to the top of it from this side. All right, I'm just going to go over this little uh, little ridge line here. Still keeping an eye out for bones. I don't really see any. We're going to have such a huge yield of money, by the way, with this with this next uh, bucket. With this next bucket of goods, we're going to have a huge, huge yield. Okay, nothing around here bone-wise. Nothing down here, it seems, either. Which is just fine, I don't mind. Okay, let's drive over all of this lava. Because it's actually the most effective way of driving this car, strangely enough. And we have found our base. It's as soon as we hit land, that's where we have uh, problems when it comes to vehicles. We can basically go through liquid really easily. All right, here we are. I'm going to get out of it while it's moving, like a real tradie, and I'll uh, see where it ends up later. Okay, what have we got? Uh, that is a big bucket of goods. We can probably actually just exchange this now. Wait, wasn't this going? Hello? Is it because the snow is in the wrong place? Oh, it is. It is because the snow was in the wrong place. Okay, so we've doubled our production by this point. Yes. So, 
when we can afford to do it, I think that we probably just want to set up a giant strip mine of these machines here, kind of like in a sequence on a conveyor belt, which conveys all of the goods onto this grinder. And then we probably want to power them all with uh, water filter hooks, right? Which we can set up here. We can just put them all along here, or maybe actually more relevantly, just one, two, three, four, five. Put all the water, the uh, filtration hooks along here. Probably going to be the best idea. Okay, we also need a turn-off valve or a shut-off valve for this lava, which I suppose we could we could just move the intake and that'd still do the trick. Okay. So the next question is, do we bother go and craft more of these miners? Because that is a big question. Let's actually get the pickaxe while we uh, kind of wait for the ores to generate. We'll go ahead and we'll start mining out a, a good little strip. So that we can kind of start putting down all of this, all of this machinery. Maybe we'll move the lava pipes back a little bit and we'll have the ore generation be significantly better than it actually is now. So I actually thought that the conveyor system was reliant on the quests, which I was actually happy to do in this DLC because they don't seem as annoying as the agriculture ones. I've also decided I'm probably also going to do the agriculture quests, quite frankly. Uh, we only need to do like 10 of them, right? We only need to do 10 of them to get the amount of money required to get the seeds that will allow us into the king's chambers and then we'll have basically given ourselves access to the end game quest all right good excellent get all of this stuff mined out as well very good okay so, yes, my plan is kind of like get a conveyor system set up going into the, feeding into the back of this thing, and then we'll have two spaces of conveyor systems where there won't be anything, and that'll give us a, maybe a gem polisher as well as, no, we won't want a gem polisher, will we? No, we'll only want to centralize them. Hello there, Timeless God, welcome back to the stream. I gave up on Sans for the day. I haven't given up on him per permanently. On the next stream, play Bop City. I have never heard of that, although I do have like a requests page on my Discord. If you drop that in the request page on Discord, I'll add it to the permanent list of game requests and I do get around to all of those games. I'm basically uh, dedicating a couple of days a week just to doing game requests alone. I'm probably going to do a bunch of them next week as well because there's a lot of them that are very, very quick to finish. Like Undertale Yellow, that's been uh, very firmly requested, so I'm probably going to be playing that one next week as well. What is it called? Bop City. I've never heard of that. Okay, well, uh, get all of this mined out as well. And we should still be absolutely fine. We can probably take this all the way to the back and we'll just craft a bunch more of the uh, resource generating machines. I probably won't craft another another muncher because it doesn't make sense to do that. Bop City is a good game. Yeah, I, I figured it would be a pretty good game. Otherwise, people wouldn't <laughs> request it. But I've, I've never heard of it. Is it like a platformer? Is it a... Um, does it... Does it uh, does it simulate stocks? What does it do? You should do it next stream for real? It's Wednesday, actually. Next stream is probably going to be Thursday, which is all day Minecraft. I'll probably get around to it next week, though. How does that sound? As long as it's, like, a quick-to-beat one. Otherwise, I'll have to dedicate a little bit of time to, to playing it. Okay. But do go onto the Discord. Do, like, drop it into the Game Requests channel. Uh, otherwise, it'll uh, basically go in one ear and out the other. I've got, I've got heinous memory issues. Okay, we've probably given ourselves uh, quite a bit of room to stick a few more machines in here. At least two. Like, I, I quite like this. We'll keep on mining out a little bit more room so we can stick more pipes in. I do think that the depth of the starting area, though, sucks ass. So we probably don't want to be here too long. We probably want to be maximizing the amount of ores that we have in a different mine. It's Friday Night Funkin'? Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe I will stream it. I probably won't be able to record it and stick it up on YouTube, though, on account of... Uh, a lot of people have been saying that that game gets copyright struck for some reason. You should play Overkill? That's the uh, shooter game, right? I've had a crack at it. It's really hard. <laughs> if that is the one that I'm thinking of. Okay, gonna mine all of this out. Awesome. Great. Uh, we probably want to focus on the crafting now, right? Because we've probably generated enough ores to get away with crafting another 
big tier one machine, and we probably do want to start lining them up in sequence behind the muncher. Okay, let's uh, mine out just a little bit more, because I'm paranoid, and that should be enough. Also, it's not copyrighted. Uh, does it have content ID claims, which is not the same as copyrighted? Um, they can be struck on YouTube for a number of reasons, and a lot of people do do it. Everyone posts it? I've heard a lot of people say that about a lot of games. Undertale was actually one of those games that attracted me because a lot of people were making videos about it. And I was told, oh no, all of the music in there is completely free, everyone can use it. But I've had every single copyright, uh, every single Undertale video copyright struck. No? No content ID claims? Okay, I'm gonna verify that right now, in real time. Friday night. Funkin. It is... A musical rhythm game. Good God, I suck at those so much. I got really, really good beat, but um, I suck at those games necessarily. Is it free? Oh, it's an itch game. Newgrounds, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I could probably definitely play that, actually. I'm talking about Bop City. Friday Night Funkin'. What is Bop City? Is that different? I've never heard of this in my life. Okay. A lot of hits on Google for Bop City. Okay, like, I'll check it out. I'll check it out at some point. Uh, for now, in Hygienia, we are going to go and probably... Okay, one of these machines is broken already. Jesus, that was quick. Let's actually go ahead and um, just kind of hit the shutoff valve, which is taking this and uh, dropping it on the ground right here, so nothing is powered. We'll take this bucket of resources, and we'll see if we can't craft ourselves some goodies with what we have here. We do still, unfortunately, have to use this annoying hand-sorting system, which uh, I don't really want to do, but I will do it. Okay, iron over here. Let's separate out into iron. Uh, we could probably do the gold first, actually, but uh, there's nothing in front of it, so we can't dump it straight into the mouth of another bucket. Unless we just dump it into this one, maybe? Okay, let's see if this works. If not, it makes a huge mess. That worked almost perfectly. All right, good. We've got lots of, what is this? Hard stone. That's <laughs> useless to us. Thanks, game. Probably should have actually made sure it was gold first. Let's go ahead and drop this in, see how many bricks we get. We get no bricks, but we're actually pretty close to one of the ones we need. What game am I playing? This is Hydra Near. It is an engineering simulator uh, based on uh, kind of like water flow and stuff like that. We've been playing it for a wee while. There's a lot of the VODs uh, up on my channel if you want to see any of the earlier videos. But at this point, we're basically just taking a look at the DLC. And it's kind of awesome. I kind of love the DLC. It's probably actually more fun than the base game, I hate to say it. All right, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and just drop all of these into the bucket manually. Like an... Or not. Oh, that's why. It's congested. Okay. Going to leave those behind. Uh, we probably actually do need some kind of sorting system. <sighs> Right, so we need money to get a sorting system. So we're going to sell all of our resources. We're just going to sell every single one of them. Let's go ahead, grab this bucket. Let's drop all of that into here. This will be the bucket of consolidated resources that we are going to go sell. I can't believe I actually just took that out of the bucket. Let's go ahead, drop this one right here. Boop. That is a gigantic mess. All right, excellent. Thank you very much, game. And what else we got? I'm basically just looking for all the resources that we can go and sell for a quick profit. All right, we probably need the magnet on the stick for the rest of them. Uh, let's go ahead, grab these, and we will stick them into the bucket right here, hopefully. Boop. There we go, drop that in there. And I'll lift all of this up as well. You should be popular. Uh, I will be eventually. My issue with my channel right now is no one knows I exist, which is uh, kind of why I'm streaming right now. It's, uh, you know, exposure. You're my favorite YouTuber? Well, that was quick. It's probably because I read chat, right? There's like two things YouTubers seem to refuse to do on streams, and that's read chat, or even kind of like acknowledge their community, which I don't want to do. I don't, I don't really want to invalidate any of my community. 
Let's go ahead and drop this on the back of the truck and we'll sell its contents for a tidy profit, I think. Let's go ahead and also toss all of these into this bucket. And we've lost them. We probably need to refuel the truck too, so let's go ahead and do that before we go. Go up here. Okay, I just crashed into a stick and the truck just came to a stop. <laughs> Silly. All right, let's go ahead and jump off of here. Not into the lava because it bounces us around and makes it kind of hard to refuel it. We'll get a bucket of lava going. Excellent. And now we want to jump up here and refuel this bad boy like so. And we want that heinous, disgusting clipping texture, don't we? Let's jump up. Boop, there we go. We're stuck on the lava now. Let's get up here and drop that in. Clipping texture? No, not yet. Can we just drop this in here? Yes, we can. Perfect. Uh, clipping texture? No, not yet. Almost. Almost there at the clipping texture. Go ahead and grate this. Do you know who the great axolotl? Uh, if that's a person, I have no idea who they are. I know what an axolotl is, though. It's a salamander who was, um, who was given too much water at birth. Okay, we'll come up this away, and we'll drop this bucket off into the jeweler. The jeweler can basically have all of the wealth. Uh, this thing handles like absolute ass every time we refuel it as well. I don't know why this is. It just doesn't turn as sharp as it, as it usually does. Okay. So we'll come all the way through here, all the way to the shop. Oh my god, it's drifting like crazy. It's really fiddly. I don't know why the refueling mechanic does this. And it's all temporary as well, but it seems like every time you refuel the car, it just kind of like slips and slides sideways or drifts in a, in a direction you don't want it to go. Okay, we're here. Let's see how much money we get for our hard work. We are going to get a little bit of frame drop and also, oops, drop it. We're getting 12 grand. Jesus, that is exactly what I want to see. Okay, thank you. We're going to take this. We're going to buy ourselves a sorting system. That is perfect, actually. That's exactly what we wanted. We just wanted an absolute ass load of money. So that we can start making a sorting system to pipe upwards. Play Roblox? I do play Roblox. I'm, uh, I just don't watch content. That's the thing. I, I'm a doer, not a viewer, which is why you're seeing me on the screen. Okay, good. I only have, like, half an hour free every day, and I usually spend it, like, um, brushing my teeth and getting ready for bed so that I can go to bed. Other than that, I'm uh, dumping all of my productivity into YouTube, which is probably why you like the channel. Okay, we're going to come over this hill right here. And we're going to immediately correct what we're doing back to the road because we kind of want to get all of the sorting system just up and running about as fast as possible. I don't want to screw around too much with this. I still find it really funny that there's like no durability or anything on the cars. It seems like something that would be almost mandatory in a game like this, and yet it, it just completely skipped all the vehicles. Maybe because the vehicles just get shot up into the sky so frequently. But they're so cheap! They're so cheap. Just buy another one. That's what I did when I was playing Farming Simulator 19. Just every time you crash a car or it's too far away for you to bother go to, to retrieve it, just uh, buy another. <laughs> Simple as that. Okay, so through here, this is not where we want to be, is it? This is not the sorting system we want. Actually, it is, because there's one thing we can get here that we can't get in the other city. We want to grab some of this money, some of this 12 grand right here. We're going to drop this on here. And how much have we got? 13 grand, almost 14 grand. We want this ice melter right here. Now, we're going to need a lava intake for this. But this is basically going to be the beginning of the chain going into our sorting system. Probably don't need too many straight pipes to go into this. We need a lot, a, like a lot of the liquid pipes, which we are not going to find at the store. So we'll go ahead and spend 416 bucks on these. I'm happy with that. I feel bad? What? Uh, what do you mean you feel bad? There's, there's, no, there's no need for that. Okay, we'll go ahead and we'll grab this pipe right here. Uh, the whole purpose of my channel is to make people smile. Like, I'm not doing anything else with my time. I just want to make people smile. Uh, let's... It kind of ignored the city now because we're dumb. Did we get our money? I don't think we got our money. No, we did not. Oh my god, someone almost had an enormous payday. That was very close. You should be popular. Don't feel bad for uh, people not knowing me. Literally, like, it will change eventually. I'm just kind of like patiently waiting. Uh, I don't really want to speed anything up. I'm kind of enjoying uh, how big my community is at this point. And I, when it gets bigger, I'll enjoy that in the future, but... I don't really want to forget kind of like the easy mode of being a, a streamer or a YouTuber, which is kind of like 
where you have the time to be able to talk. Oh, yes. They are random. That was, what the hell? Something is a foot. Okay, I can't really drop this in the back of the truck, so I'll just uh, go ahead and jump around. Yeah, like the size of my community now, I love it. It's, it's really, really nice. I get to actually talk with people individually. And I know that when people get bigger, they don't necessarily get that opportunity. I learned that from Markiplier, actually. Markiplier said that his one regret was that he never got to kind of like be a part of his own community before he blew up. And then he just started, started putting out memes and stuff. People just loved it. But he was never actually a part of his own community. And I, I don't necessarily uh, want to be like that. I want to I learn from other people's mistakes, including Markiplier's. Right, so over here, we are going to find an absolute heap of efficiency. Oh, this guy's got a uh, quest for us as well. Do you want a lump of iron? What do you need? And I'll give a you dagger. A 100 kilo golden dagger. Jesus, late. Oh, that is actually a lot of tokens, though. We'll take it. Thank you. Let's go ahead and drop that in the back of the car. And I think we'll probably, like, angle the truck so that we can kind of get all of the stuff in one single go, right? We're going to need quite a bit of piping as well. Probably going to need a few of these straight conveyors, at least two of them to hook into the front of the machines. Probably get three for post posterity's sake. Probably need a lift to lift into the machine, the grinder. We're also going to need a centralizer hook right here. Good. I'm happy with this. That's going to be 1.4 thousand bucks. That's actually a drop in the bucket now, which I'm very happy to say. That's 10% of our wealth, and it's going to generate us so much more money. Good. Now that we've done that, we could probably think about getting some of this piping. Now, we could lava a pipe all the way into the bottom of the mine shaft that we have basically set up, which we could then also plug into the grinder. But I also really like the idea of having the grinder and the machines on the same circuit so that we're not wasting lots and lots of productivity i have a question just say it you're welcome to uh freedom of speech on this channel you just got to live with the consequences of it okay let's go ahead and buy a few more pipes because we're gonna need one two three straights and at least one elbow one two three straights and at least one elbow and let's also do the smart thing before we go ahead and just double down on this. We'll take a look at this machine right here. Because the pipes are supposed to be coming out of here, aren't they? So we're probably going to need a T-junction as well. To kind of like feed into this right here. Let's go ahead and just buy a T-junction. Right here. Great. Can I be a mod? Absolutely not, my dude. I am managing my channel until I get way too big. And then I'll start paying people with uh, years of experience. Mm -hmm. if, if you've got years of experience, I might consider you... When I start getting to the point where I would need a mod, but uh, it's probably one of the most fun things on my channel is moderating my own channel, so. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not making people mods. Okay, we'll go here. I'm flattered that you asked, though. I'm flattered that you'd like to be a mod. But I don't have any mods on my channel right now. I'm, I'm enjoying doing it myself. Everything on my channel is done myself. All the editing, all of the uh, content, all of the community posts, everything. It's literally myself. All of the comment responses all me as well. Ah, we, I don't think we actually bought any of this, did we? Check out money. No, we did not. All right, let's get into the truck. We'll back this up onto the sales podium. And hopefully that'll be low enough for us to be able to just buy it. I have years of experience. Okay, uh, come back to me when I have like 30,000 subscribers. Maybe at that point I'll probably need a moderator. But um, as it currently stands, I don't actually need any moderators. All right, let's go around here. If you've got good experience, uh, you can probably actually shop around with other YouTubers who do have like 30k subscribers or more, because they do need moderators. Uh, their channel is probably at that point too big to kind of like go around. Why is the handling on this truck so strange? Every time you see it like shaking to and fro to the side, it's me trying to turn. It's not me bumping into things. It's, that's literally how the truck is handling. All right, we're going to go across the lava field as well because it's the easiest point from A to B. Get us all the way back to homeland. We are going to need lava pipes. We're going to need a lot of lava pipes, and I don't necessarily know where we're going to plug them in. Unless we kind of, like, just take from the ones that are already above, we maybe replace the elbow junction right at the apex with a T junction. We could probably feed in from that. Or we could feed in from a T-junction from the machinery itself. I'll show you when I get there. I'm kind of like, I'm thinking about puzzles in my head before we actually kind of like get to them. 
Okay, uh, coming around here. I don't know why this is like the fastest point from A to B. It's so weird. It's so weird that the liquid areas end up actually being more travel efficient than the roads. Okay, maybe not now. M maybe not now. All right, we'll come through here. What are we looking at? We are looking at a bunch of crap, essentially. We need to put a bucket down south because we don't have one down south. Probably this one will do because it's the bucket we've already got most of our resources in. I'll put this right here. Do we need to repair anything? We probably do, actually. Probably need to repair a bunch of things. Let's go ahead and drop this down, plug it into here. Done. Excellent. What's broken? That one's broken. We only have one more repair tool, so let's just go ahead and fix that one. Hopefully it's not going to congest up the grinder, or the muncher, as I keep calling it, but it shouldn't do. Okay, so now that we've got access behind here, we probably want to start setting up the... Ah, that's actually going to make it really tricky. It's going to be really tricky to do that. Unless... Okay, hear me out. So we put a straight pipe here. Right. We put a straight pipe here, we do away with that elbow, and then we elbow in from underneath here, and that will allow us to put a conveyor, a straight conveyor on top of here, which means we probably actually needed two elbows. Ah, that's actually a pain. That's a that is such a pain. Oh no. Okay, the grinder is not working. Let's actually turn everything off so it doesn't congest. Good. Right, so we need a straight pipe going down just to fix up that grinder. And then we're probably going to need to go and get another elbow. We probably shouldn't be stingy at this point of the game, to be quite honest. Is it turning? I'm not sure it's turning. Is it turning? Yeah, it's definitely turning. It's not munching the uh, things that's in it, though, so it is actually congesting, which is not good whatsoever. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, maybe turn this on. No, not this one. Let's turn this one on. Just one of them. That one has a speed bonus, so it's going to break faster. Makes for a more efficient yield, I would say. Uh, we've got another little ice chunk here. I don't know where this came from. Weird. Go ahead and just process that. Manually, by hand. Okay, so... Here's what I'm thinking. we got a lava tea pipe. Basically plugged out the back here. And that will power... The machine. The big old water purifier that we have over... This thing. This thing right here. If we T-pipe into this, we can have it running alongside the conveyor belts. And it should be absolutely fine and dandy. Like... Maybe like, uh... Well, maybe not there, because that's probably where the conveyor system needs to go. Ah, okay, so the conveyor system is actually a little bit more fiddly than I thought it would be if we want to recess it down into the ground right here. We could probably... Stick it here. Put a T-pipe out the back of this grinder, and then we could have the water pipes coming out the back here, so we're going to need one, two elbows. We're going to need a bunch of elbows, actually. Let's just see what we have first. Because we're going to need a straight going straight into the back of the grinder, so that we have a hook centralizer. And we also need the bottom kind of cleared out as well, unfortunately. So this would have to go here. Right, and then we need two elbows come... Top and bottom, I think. And if we can get that sorted, we should be able to set up this uh, whole sorting system. Let's actually back the truck in so we can kind of like get all access. But that's probably good enough. Where are you? All right, there's a straight pipe right here. Let's go ahead and drop this one. Probably not in this lane or there, but right here. Because we need two elbows to be here and here, leading into that so that the lift can essentially function and this needs to pipe into basically here so we'll turn that one into a t intersection instead of being what it is which is just a straight pipe for now go ahead drop this here and mm -hmm. get rid of that one as well come back here and we want to pipe it in from here yes that's exactly what we want we want a straight pipe right here that'll be a straight conveyor straight conveyor there as well so the machinery will basically start here and start dumping onto a single conveyor, which we can set up right this second, but we still need more of these pipes, don't we? If we were closer... Oh, we do actually have another elbow here, but I think we need two. 
Yeah, we definitely need two of these things. Okay, good. Put this one there. Need to hook it into there. Probably get another straight pipe going in for a conveyor belt, just so we gave it a, a little bit more room to play with when we get more crafted machines. But until we get more crafted machines, it doesn't actually make a huge difference. Okay, good. So now that we've got that all set up, that's good. We're also probably going to be moving all of this stuff as well, aren't we? We'll probably definitely keep this at T junction, so we're going to like push off of this area. We'll need two elbows to hook into a straight line across the top of the conveyor system. And that should allow us some egress into the back of here. Perfect. Okay. So we do need another elbow. We need a water pipe elbow. We actually need a few of them. Let's just go ahead and set up these conveyor systems so that we kind of have everything in place for when we need to place it. So this needs to go right here. And we need another straight conveyor that comes in from up above. Here we go. We'll stick this one in right here. It's facing the right way. Yes, it is. Perfect. I know this looks really, really jank, but this is actually probably the best way of setting out all of these machines. To be quite honest, this prob it probably is actually the best way. With no complaints from me. Okay, we need one more conveyor belt. That's all of our conveyors. We can afford to get another couple of hooks right here. Good. One of these has to be a centralizer. That one's probably honestly going to be the centralizer, so we can maximize the amount of space that we have on the conveyor belts, which we are going to put just up here. Is it facing the right way? Yes. And we want to put it right there so that it all centralizes when it feeds into the muncher. Excellent. So we need one straight, an elbow, one straight, an elbow. We need two straights, two elbows, and that's all we're going to need for the piping for a long time. Two straights, two elbows. We could probably even get an excess of these straights so that we can keep on feeding in more machines. But we do have enough room to get a bunch of machines regardless, straight off rip. And while that's generating resources, we are going to go and finish off this... Um, it's not a sorting system, but at least it... Oh, piss, we're stuck. At least it kind of gets exactly what we need before we get the sorting system, which is going to be very expensive to set up, and we're also going to need to uh, set it up somewhere that isn't where we are currently farming. Because I'm pretty sure that the depth cap of the starting location here is really, really kind of crap, and we don't necessarily want to stay there long term. We're going to set up a new base. I'm probably going to set up at... I like the idea of Lumberton. I like the, the one just above the jewelers. So we can basically just jump down a mountain to sell all of our goods for money. But at the same time, we're probably also getting really, really close to the point of the game where we don't necessarily need to be farming for money specifically. We already have 14 grand in the back of the ute, and we're getting it faster than we can spend it at this point, which is awesome. I actually, it's, it's an awesome place to be in. Kind of weird that I know exactly where this place is now. Like, without any signs or navigation or anything like that. We haven't even checked our map in the back of the back of the ute right here. Okay. So we'll come over here. And we're now at the place we want to be at. We're also going to want to probably build those two gigantic stores. The tier 2 and the tier 3. In this session. Hopefully by the end of the session we'll get access to Moats Island. But I won't be too disappointed if we don't. We'll at least kind of get all of the uh, stores built. I just ran somebody over and knocked them off into the void. Sucks to be them. Go ahead and just uh, bag this in here. I don't know if we can kind of like reach these pipes from a distance, but I am going to try. All right, okay. We, we need two of these elbows. Why did I just jump that? I didn't hit the space bar. Whoops. One. Good. Okay. I do like that there's a lot of areas that you can jump up on this truck right here. Two. Okay, I'm hitting Q. That's the issue. I'm hitting Q to get into the truck instead of Q to drop the item. Just got stuck inside of the car. That's all awkward. Let's go ahead and get a couple of these straights in here. One, two. I'm going to get three and four. That's probably just three, actually. We're probably realistically not going to get any more than six machines set up. We probably, if we have access to them, want to get a couple of water filter hooks too. Gem polishes, probably not too useful to us. Unless we get a sorting system, which we're probably not going to set up at that uh, yucky early game place. Okay, so let's go ahead and pay for this with this here money. Uh, 116 bucks, I'll take it, sure. 
probably also want a couple more conveyors, actually, if we're going to expand out the area that we will spend mining. Like so, right? Go ahead and buy these. They're probably going to be significantly more expensive. 440. They were significantly more expensive. And we're done here. We are literally done here. We probably need lots and lots of magma pipes now to kind of like feed into the system that we have so that we can set up that water purifier. So we're going to go all the way over to the bubble, all the way over there, and we are going to see if we can't get ourselves some more infrastructure. I do like infrastructure. The infrastructure is going to be absolutely awesome. Good, good. Come all the way over here, and perfect. Yeah, we could consider this place right here as kind of like the place we don't want to mine, Waterside, because it honestly sucks ass. If we can just get a machine that just kind of like takes all of the brunt of water generation, we don't need it. We, we don't need any of that water around there. It's automated with a single machine. It would be a waste of time and resources set up there. I suppose it is really close to the city. And we can just go over the lava. Oh, I suppose there is benefits to it. I don't know how good it would actually be, though. Right, now that we're here, we want some lava piping, which we are going to have to back the truck up over here to get. I got the truck stuck on a post. That's embarrassing. All right, good. Let's go ahead and throw our ass out this way. Beautiful. Where's our money? We need our money. And I'm also uh -huh. going to go ahead and throw this foot into the museum as well. I'm pretty sure it spawned randomly. It was in a place where we've crossed, I'm take a certain, a hundred different times already. Awesome. So we are missing one leg, one rib, possibly two tails and a horn. It's only five more bones. It's pretty good. Unless it's like a, a skeleton who rides it, which would be kind of silly. Valve hook. Uh, we can put that on the lava. That would be pretty handy, actually. Let's go ahead and buy this. And we'll also get five water hooks as well. And then we'll just spend all of our time repairing this on the surface instead of uh, going down south and repairing all of the machinery. Because that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Three and four. I think four. And five. This should be five. Gorgeous. Uh, let's go ahead and get ourselves some more of these lava pipes. Elbows. A bunch of straights. We're probably going to need a heap of these straights. Uh, maybe like four or five. Oh, maybe not a heap, but enough. And we're also going to need a couple of T-junctions. Maybe one, two, three, four T-junctions. I mean, that'd be the entire infrastructure basically just polished off. And put another one here. And since I know that they're required, we're going to get a bunch of these elbows. And the reason I know this is because we need to hook up a bunch more machinery when we craft it. We just don't have it yet. I'm going to get the pipes required to do so. We need like maybe four per line against the machine. Excellent. Whoops, that's a cork, which we do actually need. We'll get two of those corks. One for each end of the water. And we're probably going to need a bunch more of these straights too, realistically. Okay, that's 1,500 bucks. We have more than enough to afford this. Get a bunch of these. Yes, sirree. And now we're going to buy it. Done. Excellent. Yes. We'll keep straight back to our mining facility, where we are going to find ourselves uh, essentially having automated the entire thing. The generation, the ore generation that we should have by now should be enough to kind of like buy whatever we want for the future. But now we just need lots and lots of resources. We're going to need a sorting system that pumps all the hardstone out into the hardstone uh, crusher. And we're also going to need four more for auto smelting ingots. And then another five splitters going off from that for the gems. There were four in the base game. Diamond has been added in the DLC. We've already found a couple of them, which is pretty cool, actually. Good. Let's go ahead and start setting all of this stuff up. It's a nice, bright, sunny day. There is an elbow on the floor. Good. So, what are we looking at? Ah, good. We can actually go all the way down that hole now. Perfect. So, we probably want to do all of the water pipes first. We need two straights, two... What are they? Two straights, two elbows. I want to go down here first, I think. Good. Right here, it can go there. Then we need elbow, elbow, straight. Run right the middle. Perfect. Good! Progress! I love progress. That is a valve hook. Uh, let's not use that just yet. I'll use it to... I'll put it on the... What? The... Um, I'll, I'll put it on here. I'll put it right there. I'll put that water valve hook right there. 
Because the water is not really going to damage anything if it's not hooked up to anything. Be quiet. Wait, this is another straight. Where are all the elbows at? Okay, we've got one elbow right here. We need another right there. Good. This should be the entire infrastructure for our water setup. We're not going to waste a single pipe either. Good. Done. Nice. Let's go ahead and grab this one. And we'll come down. Perfect. And we'll put this one right there. Good. So now all of that is hooked. Oh, we still need one more elbow, for God's sake. Still need another elbow to hook up this machine here. Otherwise, it's just going to dump it all on one single conveyor that isn't moving. Hopefully, we've got one more elbow in here, but I highly doubt it. I really highly doubt that we have one more elbow. Okay, let's get this water valve hook set up because that's probably the next choke point, right? Where the hell do we put them? Where are they? I'm sure we bought them. Okay, we're getting a huge mess of piping. Uh, let's get all of these conveyors off the off the uh, belt here. More hydrogen air. Yes, we're actually getting pretty far into the DLC. We've already automated money. Uh, we're just kind of like polishing off the starting area, min-maxing it a little bit before we kind of move on to a different a different zone. Where the hell are the water hooks? I just bought a bunch of them. There they are. They're all buried. Oh, I don't want to be in the truck. No, we lost our pixel hunt too. Embarrassing. Okay, where are they? There's none under here. I'm certain that I bought like, what, like five? That's as many as you can put on a single circuit. I'm almost certain of it. Uh, we went back to Minecraft for a little bit. I got jump scared like crazy in it, which was uh, a little bit embarrassing. And we died, unfortunately. So uh, tomorrow, Minecraft World is going to be a completely new world. Huh? Huh? Let's go ahead and just drop that there. Let's go ahead and get these last two water hooks. And we'll put these on the lava pipes because I'm pretty sure they do function on here. Yeah, okay. Like that. We need a another one right there. We'll get another one right here and i'm not going to go and stick it right on the end of there because it's unnecessary we'll put that one there we'll put that one there we could probably uh, have this one be a, a pressure intake at some point but i don't really think that's necessary either so now that we've got all these water filters on here none of the machinery plugged into the lava system should be taking damage and i'm also pretty sure the water is not going to be damaging the water machine either because that's an output and not an input all right good now that we've done that we oh god we have to go all the way back down Oh, we have to go back to that uh, place and get another elbow for the, uh, for the for the system here. Let's go ahead and plug in the system for the grinder. Let's go one further forward. Into It needs to basically be here. I think that's right. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Okay. And we need the other cork on the end of it after we put in the straight pipes. Leaning out to inside that cave right there. So uh, what we're kind of leaning up to do is get some machines starting about here to just dump resources onto the conveyor belts right here, which is going to drop into one single grinder, which does actually work very, very well. Um, so we're, I'm, I'm going to be very, very happy having that set up. Uh, we need a T-junction. We need a T-junction set up down this. We can plug it into the gigantic water collector that we now have to have in every single location, which might seem like busy work for the sake of busy work, but it's... It's kind of cool, actually, when the game kind of shakes up mechanics and it kind of puts higher constraints on you. So that should be that water machine all plugged in. I don't think there's a switch we have to enable or anything like that. And that's good as well, because we don't want to enable anything. So let's go ahead. Now that we've done this. Now that we've done this. We want to basically dismantle everything that we've already built at the front there. We want to put one of these machines going into the ground right there the other one goes i know we're, we're kind of like tight on space but it will pay off so this is going to dump onto the conveyor belts when they start moving love's all dripping that's absolutely fine watch me give a hoot probably want to mm -hmm. dismantle all of these pipes down here this can be an elbow right here let's put this as an elbow there and this one can be an elbow right here and then we want to elbow out from that as well so that we can go straight along this conveyor system, like so. And then we're gonna, well, we can't T-junction every single time, can we? No, we can't, we can't do that whatsoever. So we're probably gonna have to have the pipes going in from one side. Mm -hmm. Drop that there, drop that there. This can actually go out one further, maybe to there. And that should line up to the back of this one. And then we will have like a T-junction coming off from this pipe, which will have a, 
An elbow going downwards and another pipe going across the two. I think. I, th I think that'd be the way that we want to do this. Right. I knew that we'd need a bunch of different straight pipes for this as well. All right, we've made a bit of a mess upstairs, which is absolutely fine. No one actually cares that we've made a mess. Because we are engineers. It's kind of expected. So we get more of these straight pipes. Probably need more T-junctions than I thought we would, though. Huh? Uh, that one can not go there. That can huh? go right here. So right here, we are probably going to need a T-junction that goes... Mm, can't go downwards either. Actually... We get a T-junction here, leading out so we can filter into that one. And then we get another T-junction that just goes down into there. And then we just elbow into the two of them. That should be really easy to do. Then we probably don't have to worry too much about the intricacies of the rest of the build. Because we can just kind of like go in from side to side. Right, this one can be T-junction like that. And then we need another T-junction that just points downwards. Because we do want to point in... We do want to poke in some more machinery after this. Do we have any more T-junctions? Yes, we actually do have plenty of T-junctions. Nice. Okay. So right here, through there, we're going to face this one downwards. And we are actually hilariously going to use the output of that to kind of like melt in whatever is stuck there. And we want this one to be hooked in like that. Perfect. So that's one of them hooked in. This one here... It's going to have to keep on going all the way around. And then we'll elbow it across. And we're going to need another T-junction to kind of like filter into the back of the other machine. Good. That can go like so. This can go... Actually, that's still a little bit too preemptive. Let's go ahead and get another straight pipe because we need it. This one right here will do the trick just nicely. Uh, right there. I know we could probably have just... Oh, we could probably just elbow out from here, actually. That's probably actually going to save us on a bunch of piping. Let's do that. We'll save that. Uh, hook that down here. Drop that here. And that one can be a straight pipe without being too invasive. This one here can elbow in from this direction. I forgot we already had this infrastructure basically just set up. We're going to want to save our T-pipes because we're going to need a bunch of them anyway. Like for points right here where we need to elbow in from this point, this pivot, and we need to elbow downwards and put a single elbow right here. Good, so that's both machines should be all powered. Oh, good, they also kind of like take ice from the, the bottom as well. That is fantastic. Now, we are going to need a lot of repair kits because some of this is completely buggered. Let's go ahead and just shovel this out of the way because we don't have a pickaxe down here. This one can go down as well. Awesome, done. Great, let's go ahead and drop this on the ground. I found our pickaxe. It was uh, up here the whole time. Yeah, we need lots and lots of repair kits at this point. Let's go ahead, take out enormous, vast quantities of wealth, and we'll go and buy a couple of repair kits. Because once we repair all of the systems down subsurface, then we're going to start worrying about repairing essentially just those water filters, because they should take a brunt of the damage from the lava. It's kind of nice actually being really close to the city. Although, once we have a cart, we're probably not going to worry too much about having spare parts, because we'll just fill up a cart with um, as many of the lava pipes as we can we'll get another cart that we can fill up with as many of the hydro pipes as we can and that should essentially carry us through the entire game we'll just have to worry about the tears again okay good i do kind of want to see if there are more tiers of like lava pipes though that'd be interesting it's interesting to see whether or not we can kind of like just absolutely spew out resources at an alarming rate uh what were we here for we were here for a bath weren't we we want to take a bath because we really, we smell terrible. We haven't showered this entire game. Repair kits. Where are they? Oh, they've got to be up there then, right? If they're not down here, they're probably up top. All right, let's see. Yeah, there they One are. Day, okay. I will buy a shiny new truck. Yeah, I won't hold my breath though. I don't think you will, to be quite honest. Let's just get a few of these bad boys. Like, I'd say four of them would do the trick nicely. Oops, don't know if we paid for this one. Let's find out. Otherwise, it'll scream as soon as we leave. It did not scream. Perfect. We don't want to get too much of them. Hit it home. Be right back. You're fine, dead space, mate. Okay, we'll dump this in the back of the truck as well. Let's go ahead and drop those off. Excuse me, lady. What are you even doing here? I thought you owned the store. Maybe she was just, like, looking at everything she can't afford because she can't, she can't get a plot of land to mine to save her life. All right, this guy had a quest, didn't he? Did we already take it? Sir? I need something specific. 
All right, he wants a golden axe for quite a lot of tokens. I'm taking it. That is a good quest line. Excellent. Uh, I don't actually know what we're supposed to be doing with these quests, though. So, oh, there's still a repair kit over here. I don't know what we're supposed to be doing with these quest lists, because as far as I know, we can buy just about everything except for cards with the base game money. I think we spend it on igloo parts, which is kind of weird. It's kind of weird that, that on a volcanic island, we're building an igloo. It's a little bit silly. Probably getting to logic as well. We're probably getting to the scale of wealth where we could reasonably actually get into logic, and it wouldn't be so bad. We could also, hilariously, afford four, five, four auto smelters and start setting up a crude sorting system up top on the, um, at the base. At the base, essentially. Now, none of the machines get damaged on the sorting system, so we can just plug it straight into the top and bypass the water filters. So we can kind of reduce the strain of pressure on those water filters. But we do have quite a few repair kits. We've got 20 runs of tools right here that we are going to run through. Okay, let's go down here. We'll repair literally everything that we can. This one's first. This one's second. This one's third. Boom! Now they are never going to take damage. Okay, so this here should be plugged. Uh, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It is plugged in. Why isn't, why isn't this here working? Is it supposed to be like taking ice or something? Okay, there's a little bit of lava falling down. We're a little bit stuck in here. Uh, let's go ahead and mine out some egress so that we can actually kind of like function as an engineer. Kind of get rid of some of this crap so we can go all the way around it and hop up onto the conveyor system. Probably going to be the best method of doing all this. Nice. All right, let's get all of this pretty much mined out. And I want to be generous with the amount of room that we have to work in. Honestly, I don't want to get stuck on all of the engineering stuff like we kept having it at, uh, at Ice Hull. That was just annoying, quite frankly. All right, let's get rid of all of this. Uh, by the way, while I've got viewers here, I just want to point out that I did try and attempt Sans this morning and uh, I got really annoyed with just how boring the fight actually ends up becoming. So I'm going to do, I'm going, I'm going to fight him off camera. Uh, I'm pretty sure like having to commentate and do all of that stuff is really throwing off my ability to actually play the game. So I'm not giving up permanently on Sans. I'm, I'm, I'm just not going to do that. I'm going to come back to him. When I've kind of got my facilities in order, I am already kind of like playing the bad time simulator in my spare time anyway. I'm, I'm really struggling with him. I'm terrible at bullet hells and my controller that I use is Bluetooth, so I've got a little bit of a, a latency issue as well. I'm not, I haven't given up on him. I'm not going to forget him. I am going to go back and do him. I'm just not going to make people watch me do it for hours on end on a stream. That is absolutely brain dead. I don't want that to be what my um, what my channel becomes. You know, just me kind of like silently sitting there playing a video game while chatters also kind of silently sit there, not even paying attention to it anymore. I want I want my channel to be engaging. So I just, yeah, just a little bit of a, a quick announcement to say, no, I've not forgot that Sans exists. I will be going back to him. You guys just won't be seeing that in the front end. I'll probably even stick it right at the end of the game theory as well. I will beat him. I will beat him. And then I'll start like a local recording or something like that. Okay. Good. Let's go ahead and bust it down. Someone said hack the game as well. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to cheat. I'm like, flat out, flat rule. I'm just not going to cheat. Unless a game has absolutely worn out its welcome with me, like uh, Afraid of Monsters did by the end of it. I'm just not going to cheat. I'm, I'm just flat out not going to do that. So we could probably actually start hooking in the rest of the piping as well. Let's see. Let's see why this isn't uh, kind of like swallowing our, our loads. Do we need to put ice into the top of these machines? This one right here. Oh, it requires logic as well. What garbage. Yuck. No one asked for this. Okay. Actually, we do have a spear lever lying around that didn't work on this machine here, didn't we? I'm certain of it. There it is. Ice. Perfect. Okay, so... Less annoying than I thought it would be. Let's go ahead and uh, plug this in, like so. Boop. Boop. Yeah, it's definitely logic. It's definitely the outtake pipe. And it's definitely intake lava. Uh. What? It does nothing. 
I don't, again, have to stick ice in the top of it, do I? Okay, I can't really reach the top of it, so I hope not. Oh, piss. <laughs> this thing is actually stopping me from um, sticking anything into the top of it. Oh, okay, so we do actually need to melt ice in that. Right! Gotcha! And we also still need a single pipe right here. Right. So we need consistent ice. I know exactly how I'm going to do that, actually. I know exactly how I'm going to do that. We are going to have some conveyors coming along here. We're going to have a bend here. And we're going to have a lift on this one. And then we're going to have a bend, basically just stuffing it in there. And this right here is going to change to a right hook. And we're going to put some ice on top of it so it basically diverts all of that ice into the sorting system. However, the downside of this is that if there's not enough ice, it won't divert any ice, which is a little bit annoying. So we're probably going to have to think about that in advance as well. So what do we need? We need uh, two, we need one straight, actually we don't need one straight conveyor whatsoever. We can actually just use this one, put that one there. I think that's the right way. Yep, that's definitely the right way. Now we need a right splitter. We need a right splitter to divert ice off into this side of the map. Go ahead and just grab all of this stuff, put it back on the conveyor belt as well. Oh, there's going to be heaps of stuff actually. Maybe we don't do this. Maybe this is a waste of our time. Maybe. Ah, oh, well, who cares, honestly. Let's go ahead and just dump it all in. Watch me here. A lot of iron that we've got here. Probably need a builder's hammer, honestly, just to solidify that we don't want to move these conveyor belts right here. Okay, I don't even have to move my mouse, to be honest. I can just do this on this pile, right? Undertale, lol. Rip Undertale. No, no, it's, it's, it's going to come back. There is a game theory lined up, and I am insistent that I am going to beat Sans. It's just... The thing is, right, I love the game. I absolutely love Undertale. It's a great game. It's charming. The characters are awesome. Uh, the graphics are also very charming. The soundtrack slaps. Like, I, there, there's very few things that I can say bad about Undertale. But the Sans fight is flat out brain rot to watch. It is so goddamn boring. It was boring to play. Like, once you've played it for an hour, you're just all like, I, do, I don't really want to do this anymore. And I think that's the entire point of the Sans fight, is that you just kind of are demotivated to play the game. And for that to be a mechanic is just stupid. Honestly, it's probably the one miss that Toby Fox has in any of that one single game. It's a good game. But ultimately... That one specific design choice is uh, really, really stupid. It was just a stupid design choice. Oh, awesome. We're getting to the bottom of this pile. Perfect. I almost just picked up the conveyor belt. That was really close. A oh, lot of ice. Okay. It's going to like... It's going to sneak up on me. Okay, good. Almost got this pile down. But yeah, I don't want everybody to like sit there for... I don't know, quite potentially five separate sessions watching me lose at a boss over and over again. Because it's dreadfully dull. It's so goddamn boring. So I'll just make a local recording on my... Oh, that was close. I almost picked it up. I'll just make a local recording and I'll uh, try and beat it in my spare time. And I won't, like, put too much commentary into it. Unless I want to do it in, like, post or something like that. I'll, I'll do, like, commentary over the top. Because by the time of beating Sands, I'm basically going to have mastered the game. And then, again... I'm never going to play it again, quite frankly. And the reason for that is the combat is just so goddamn jank. <laughs> if it had, like, a, a very basic update that kind of converted the control scheme to Deltarune's one, almost picked up the conveyor belt again, then, quite frankly, I would come back to it a bunch of different times. But I'm not motivated to do so because we've already seen just about everything that there is to see. Good. So, now that that's out of the way, we need two left bends. We need a lift... We're also going to need a bunch of pipes, actually. Okay, we need lefts, and we also need a right splitter. Yeah, let's go do that. We'll go do that now. We can't really do anything else while we wait. Uh, we could actually just take a, a repair kit whenever we find one. Where the hell is it? Okay, I think we've left it downside, right? Downstairs? Let's just repair this first water filter hook, because I know it's going to be taking all of the damage... That the machine's going to be taking. We already also have another machine that we could just hook in right now. But I, I don't really want to do that just yet. Actually, what's the harm? It's free productivity. Let's just do it. 
It's not like it's consuming any uh, durability off the ma off the machines. Sorry, I had a little bit of acid reflux there. Uh, we'll plug that one in there, and then we'll get another T-junction and another lava elbow. There we go. That's the lava elbow. Uh, basically, out of the way. We want to have it going up here. And now we want that T-junction. Another T-junction. Yes, I know. We need a billion T-junctions for the system that we've got set up. And then we're going to go get those conveyors. Two lefts, uh, one right splitter, and we need a lift as well. Excellent. So that will basically just filter all of the water into itself. Where is this going to go? Right there. Right there, baby. Excellent. And we'll put that right there. Is it on? No. It also doesn't have a conveyor in front of it. So let... Did this just break? Oh, no. That one's broken. That's fine. I can live with that. If that one's broken, it's not so bad. Uh, we also want to put a conveyor on right in front of it. Otherwise, it'll be dumping all the resources onto the ground all, the whole time we're gone. So let's not allow it to do that. And let's stick this one right there. Gorgeous. Uh, let's now repair it. Boop. And it's on. Excellent. Nice. Awesome. So we've got productivity basically coming out the ass at this point. We just need to finish off this uh, really, really crude kind of... I don't want to say filtration system, but it is a filtration system in a way. And then I think we'll get a bunch of lifts that kind of go topside, and we'll have all of the items kind of filtering into their own little mechanisms. I think we're probably going to want to get a bucket for the hardstone. Unless we want to just get some kind of bucket that's taking all of the bricks that come out of it, and then set the weight of the bricks to the maximum amount. Hard to say. Really hard to say. Okay, coming all the way down here. We don't want to be here. We actually want to go all the way around here. Yes, 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 yes. And we want to go to that other little uh, township, didn't we? That little township that kind of relies on our business to stay afloat. Otherwise, they'd freeze to death in their tiny little peasant villages. Yuck. Yuck, I hate these paws. Look, I drive a red truck once and I become Republican. Oh, that would be so funny if anybody knew just like the lowest common denominator of the right-leaning voters here in New Zealand. They all have red Hiluxes, red Toyota Hiluxes. And they vote, they vote specifically for their own tax breaks, even though they actually end up spending more money each year in taxes, which is hilarious. I don't know why everybody in New Zealand has this stupid mentality. Well, maybe not everybody, but there's a significant portion of New Zealand that has this stupid, stupid mentality where they think... Oh, I'm, I'm just going to vote for the right-leaning government because they'll lower our taxes. And then the right-leaning government lowers taxes for the rich, which the right-leaning voters aren't. <laughs> then they're, they're not rich. <laughs> Generally, like, rich people have autonomy uh, to vote who, for who they want to. But here in New Zealand, it's just like the middle class are all like, oh, I, oh we don't need this. The middle class are like, oh, I definitely need to, to vote rich. I need to vote rich because one day I might be rich. Uh, we need two left conveyors. And it's been a consistent theme across my entire life. I have seen three huh? decades worth of uh, economic booms and recessions, and it's always the same. It's always these absolute stupid idiots who just say, oh, just screw the next poor person. I'm a hard worker. I want the tax breaks of the rich. I work hard, therefore I am rich. And it, 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 that's not actually what defines wealth whatsoever. And these people just don't really seem to understand it. Okay, so we've got a straight, which we actually don't need. It, I mean, it would be helpful to have it in the first place because we can always just, like, expand out the production. But we're not going to be there that long. So we need two left bends. Which way does this go? I don't actually know. Clear the other one. So left conveyor moves resources to the left. So we're going outwards. We want two that go left and left. Perfect. Yes. So that should be good. We want one lift. And we also do need a T-junction pipe. And we're going to need a couple of elbows to hook this into as well. As well as... Maybe three elbows would do the trick. Three elbows, two for a lift, one that goes around a corner, and one that pipes straight into the um, machine. And we need a cork to also plug that off. How much is this going to cost? Absolutely nothing, it seems. My god, I massively overestimated... Oh, did we leave our money in the other place? Oh, we did. Bugger. That's okay. We'll go on foot. Why not? It's faster. I think we've pretty much gone past money. 
at this point. We are now the kind of people who benefit from our right-leaning government here in here in New Zealand. You know they get a 30%... T no. They get taxed 33% for any excess over 78k they earn a year, but the tax breaks that they get from the right-leaning governments are pretty substantial. Now, the... Earning over 70k a year is actually really, really hard to do in New Zealand, especially if you're a hard-working, blue-collared um, working man, essentially. You're not going to meet the required threshold. My friends just got their tax breaks. Uh, my friend Carl, who works full-time as a factory uh, stocker worker and sometimes, when there aren't any, manager... He got a $7 tax break per paycheck, which is per week. So he gets an extra 7 bucks per week to spend. Nice. Nice, huh? Isn't that awesome? That's almost $210 a year. <laughs> that's absolutely crazy. I can't believe it. Like, some people think, oh, tax break, and they think, oh, that's going to be heaps of money, and it never is. It's, n it's never heaps of money. You should always vote for the we. You should always vote for the we and not the me. Because voting for the me is not only selfish, but it's, it's detrimental to society in just about every way, shape, and form. So if there's anybody out there who's like, oh, I'll, I'll just vote for the right-leaning party because they share my political views, don't do it unless they would actually benefit you in some way. Just vote like central, because they would probably also serve your views. Whatever views they are, whether they're just like uneducated, xenophobic, ignorance, or, or whatever. There's always a political party that doesn't have to be an extreme fascism that you can vote for who uh, will kind of, like, benefit everybody. Unless you're voting out of spite, in which case, yeah, definitely vote for the National Party here in New Zealand. That's that's kind of who they... That's ha that's how they got in last time, is the, uh, the previous government did really, really badly. They also got delivered a really, really bad hand, but they did really badly, and as a consequence... Um, it's not that our right-leaning party was voted in. It's that our left-leaning party was just voted out. Oh, 9,000 on the dot. That's nice to look at. I like that. Okay, uh, let's go around here, and I'm going to drop all the political talk because it's divisive, and uh, even though I try to be as centralist as I can, sometimes opinions poke through. Actually, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Like, it's... It's the centrality of people just exclusively and selfishly leaning for right-leaning governments because they think that they are the best government to lead the country. That, that, that bothers me. It, it bothers me. There's, there's people putting up a wall saying, sorry, I don't want to hear what your problems are whatsoever. I have my own problems, and I'm pretty sure these guys are going to solve them. And then they don't solve them. And then the next um, election, they'll be all like, okay, well, I know they didn't solve my problems last time, but this time, they're going to solve my, all of my problems, every single one of them. It's, it's all going to come in. It's all going to come in uh, aces for me in the next election. And then the term passes and they end up spending more money than they would have if they had just elected uh, someone um, left-leaning or centralist. And then they think, you know what? I'm feeling lucky. This is probably the time. It's like people buying scratchies, right? Voting is basically just buying a scratchy. You, you, you basically, um, you put in a little bit of, a bit of time and effort and then, hey, maybe you'll get something out of it if you're really lucky. But chances are you're not going to be really lucky, statistically, so you're probably just going to have to wait uh, for everybody else to win the lottery uh, while you're kind of kind of needing that money. Oh, well. It's a weird way of thinking about it. I don't think I've ever actually thought about politics as gambling, but it, it, when, you kind of, when you think about it, it kind of is. It kind of is gambling, because you don't really know what the hell you're going to get out of a party. Usually they don't deliver on promises. That's kind of like the, the politician's trademark is, is over-promise, under-deliver. It's kind of weird, isn't it? It's a little bit weird. Okay. I filled in time while we uh, ran on foot to go and get our money to buy all of these resources so we can pack out everything that we've got here. And we should be fine. Should be absolutely fine. We're just going to drive the car all the way back and we're going to set up these resources. We're going to see how many resources are already going to be pumped out of the machine. And maybe after that, we'll think about getting some sort of system to get some conveyors to sort everything out for us. Because now that I think about it, I don't want to do that. I really don't want to do that myself. Let's go and get into our car. And we'll back this baby in here. I'm also realizing now just how cheap a sorting system would actually be. All right, now that we did that, let's go ahead and dump our money into the back here. And we'll dump all of our resources back here as well. A couple of elbow pipes. Nice. I've got a T-pipe too. Another elbow pipe. Don't mind if I do. Got this here straight. Excellent. Got a cork. Great. Got this here. Lift. This, this big tall lift. Sorry, I forgot what I uh, what I call it for a second there. 
Go ahead, grab all of these. We've got to be missing something, right? And a splitter. Two lifts. I'm going to just, out of complete paranoia, buy a straight. I, uh, I feel like I missed something in this, in this chain of items. Okay, good. That should be everything. Wait, do we actually buy that? Did we buy it? Yeah, we definitely bought it. Okay. Okay, let's go all the way back home and we'll dump this straight back into our uh, farming stuff. Hi, Timeless God. Hello again. Read this. I just did. You are so welcome, my dude. <laughs> oh my god. Man, people on YouTube have really low expectations, don't they? I feel. I feel like people on YouTube have real low expectations. I've been told I'm the best streamer in the world several times. Uh, this month alone, and it's not even halfway through the month. Simply because I read chat. The bar is so low. If YouTubers aren't reading chat, what the hell are they doing streaming? That is the bare minimum needed to function a, a stream. Otherwise, why don't you just go on Twitch and um, sit at the zero to one viewer mark while you just don't say anything and um, and play video games? I'm not book smart. I'm money smart. Makes me more intelligent. Got hella bands. That's... I mean, I am, actually. Although I am also book smart. I, I don't know why you're trying to get me to read that out. These are actually just opinions of mine. Always try and build yourself. Always be more intelligent than you were yesterday, and you'll always have a better day than you did. That, that, that is a pinnacle that I just live my live by. If you've learned something, you've had a good day. Even if it was a bad day and the things you learned were the things that uh, you really didn't want to happen that day, you've still learned something. It's a song. Oh, okay. Do you want me to, like, sing it? I'm not book smart. I'm money smart. It makes me more intelligent. God, hella bands. I tried to be as tone deaf as possible. Uh, I went specifically out of my way to make that sound like utter garbage. So I hope whatever remix you're working on uh, also sounds equally like garbage. Okay, let's start setting all of this to crap up. This cork, important. Uh, just really quickly. Do we snuffle? It's a song. It's the story of Undertale. I already know the story of Undertale, my dude, and I can tell you that the fandom has been wrong for nine flat years. With utmost certainty. <laughs> like, I, 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 I can swear that on a Bible. I can swear that single thing on a Bible and still be very, very confident. I'm home. Welcome back home. You missed a bunch of political chat, which uh, chances are you're probably better off not hearing because it's um, a divisive of New Zealand stuff. But that was pretty much it. Didn't say what I said, but in that voice and music? What voice and what music? You want me to sing you a song that I've never heard before? Hell no. Sing it to yourself, my dude. I'm sure you can. If you are book smart, I'm sure you'll be able to do that. Uh, let's go ahead and put a T-pipe right here. Because we're going to need it for the lift. Yeah, we're definitely going to need it for the lift. Search it up. No, I'm streaming. <laughs> I thought that was really obvious. Uh, by the way, for anyone who doesn't quite know this, I do have a zero uh, tolerance policy on stream of like mid-game looking up what people tell me to look up. I'm just never going to do it. Uh, so if, if you're here trying to watch the stream to get me to do something... You're probably going to be waiting a long time. I was listening. Did you like it? Search story of Mega Man up. Uh, no, I will not be doing that. Uh, let's go ahead and pipe this in here. That's why we've got the cork. And we'll go ahead. We'll plug this in right here. I broke that rule a couple of times in the last couple of weeks. And I, I feel bad about it because it gives preferential treatment to uh, people. And I don't necessarily want to be giving preferential treatment. Okay, we'll plug that in to maximize the amount of water pressure. So what this is going to do is essentially take all of the ice and lean it up a lift into here. So it dumps it straight into the mouth of the thing that powers the lifts. So we're probably going to have to drop some of it in manually, but we should be absolutely good to go regardless. Ready, please? No. Begging will also get you nothing. That is also a hard rule on my channel. Okay, let's go ahead and stick that there. I love how the lava pipe's probably going to block off any chance of kind of like decongesting all of what we've got there. All right, let's go ahead and grab another one of these and we'll stick it up on top of here, won't we? Like so. Yes. Well, think of it from like my perspective, right? If you want me to look at something and I've got viewers, I've got three viewers right now looking at this. 
Do you really think that uh, these three viewers are here to watch me look at something you told me to look up, or are they here to uh, watch me do what I was already doing? That is a huge question that everybody should be asking themselves. And quite frankly, I don't think I've ever, like, kind of explained it so eloquently to anyone else. Usually I just politely say, no, I'm not going to do that. But, like, there is a reason, and it's all about the entertainment value of a stream. I want, this, I want everybody on the stream to enjoy the stream. And if one person is only in the stream so, I, so that they w can watch content that they can just look up for free on their own device, there's no, no loss to me. Hi right, guys, no loss. All right, so we do have this conveyor here, which could probably realistically just go there. I'm just gonna leave it over here, hopefully. Yeah, this is, uh, that's actually snapped onto the conveyor, so that's not really helpful whatsoever. Let's just go here, drop this here. What else do we need? We still need more conveyors, don't we? We still have the right splitter that we haven't set up. And it seems as though we are missing something along the chain. What was it? It's the lift. No, we definitely got a lift. I'm certain we got a lift. Okay, let's hook this up like so. I know that's the wrong way. Oh, bugger. Actually, this is the wrong side. It's a left splitter. So we don't want this. We do want the lift, though. So we're going to go back. We're going to get a right splitter. That's really unfortunate. That's really, really uh, unfortunate. Okay, good. We'll put that there. So this, in theory, works out. We'll also get a hook centralizer as well. So we need a right hook. We need a right hook. We're going back, and we're going to be absolutely fine. We should have a libertarian party alongside the Rip and Dem, but they'll never allow it. Uh, yeah, oh, that sounds American, doesn't it? Uh, I, you've got independence, don't you? It's just that there's an issue with the American education system. I gotta say, whenever there is an issue socially, that usually indicates a generation's worth of education issues. And I hate to say it, America's got a lot of issues in their education. A lot of propaganda peaks up and it kind of muddies the waters on what's truth and what's not. And one of the biggest issues that I found America uh, being educated in is not only that the lowest common denominator cannot accept um, MMP systems of uh, elections, which is what most of the world has, it's what Europe has, it's what England has, it's what us in New Zealand has, it's what Australia has, it's what um, just about everywhere except America has. Uh, America has something called First Past the Post, which is the party with the most votes runs the country. Uh, that's it. That's it. You've also got Senate and you've also got Congress and they kind of also uh, kind of uh, do things behind the scenes and they have equal say as well. But those are elected as are the presidency. When it comes to MMP, it's based on a proportion of the votes that went through the system in the first place. So if, say, Democrats get 30% and Republicans get 30% and independents get 40%, then 40% of that total government would be run by independent leaders uh, who hold something called a seat, which is just a, a, a seat in a gigantic room in a caucus. Very cool. We're seen as cattle. They want good little social workers. They won't allow a third party here. That's what I was saying. Yeah, but that, what I'm saying is you do actually have third parties here. But the issue in America is that the education system will always make it seem like it is a waste of time to vote for the independent parties. Because there are independent parties and they can win. But people need to know that they're available, and people don't know they're available. Like, um, Bobby Kennedy Jr., right? He was running, he's got a voice like gravel, but ultimately all of his policies were just chef's kiss, right? It, any rational person would look at Bobby Kennedy's policies and think, damn, that guy can think! And, uh, yeah, like, even if you go onto his website, the first policy he listed was, uh, let's pull the troops out of all of our war zones because they're dying, and it's costing us trillions of dollars a year to, like, stick them out there. But... People don't know that Bobby Kennedy Jr. was an option to vote for, even though he was an option to vote for. Fortunately, like, this will probably be a, a bit of an unpopular opinion, but uh, Kamala Harris, I'm actually quite happy that she is now taking the reins of the Democratic Party because um, she's not only qualified to do so, but she's not going to fall asleep at the stand, and she's not Trump. Like, people, people aren't shooting at Kamala Harris. There's a reason people were shooting at Trump. I hate to say it. He does kind of attract attention like that and he's he's built his entire kind of like popularity based on you know the shootability of his face uh so it's, it's it's not really any secret that people would want to assassinate him but kamala harris my god not 
like first black president, uh, female president, first female black president. Um, what else? First president who was a, oh, what was she? She was in the Department of Justice for something, wasn't she? A, um, no, it was, uh, was it DOJ? Something big, something big. Uh, I support what she does, necessarily, and she's going to get uh, kind of muddied a little bit because the Democrats are just as bad as the Republicans when, when it all really boils, boils down to it. Politics are a gamble, but... Kamala Harris uh, does actually have the potential to do a little bit of good, whereas uh, Biden was a, a little bit too kind of, like, bad. She's Indian, is she? Wow, okay, I didn't know that. Well, it makes sense, actually. She's on the other uh, side of the world from me. Not that that makes sense she's Indian. It, make, it makes sense that I didn't know. Interesting, though. That is very interesting. I bet a lot of people are going to hate that. I, I really hate to say it, but the the racism of a nation cannot go underlooked when you are voting for uh, people based on their face and personality and then their policies second. I, I bet a lot of people in America are going to absolutely hate her heritage. I didn't realise she was Indian. I thought that she was uh, African-American. My mistake. Oh, well. I'm sure she, when she wins the presidency, because honestly, voting for Trump is probably just going to be a, a, <laughs> a, a horrible waste of a vote at this point. Her presidency, uh, people are going to learn a lot of, uh, about her. She literally just started calling herself black and the black community is turned on her. Oh, oh, T. Is there like, do you know the full story of that? Because I'll take you at your word for that. I didn't realize she was Indian. That is funny though. Blackwashing yourself for votes. Oh no. I did say it was going to get muddy, didn't I? I suppose it works uh, like to an extent because I thought that she was colored. Like black. I, I thought she was black. I, I, I know she's colored because I've got eyes. I, I didn't realize what kind of color she was. Mainly because I haven't really like... I don't, I don't care about race, honestly. Like, I don't care what color somebody's skin is. What I care about is whether or not they can actually do the thing that people are asking them to do. That is way more important to me than what color they are. You know, it's, it's, it's all about qualifications and not necessarily, you know, what someone looks like. Because you can get some ugly bastards who are really, really good at things. I've, I've seen some ugly people who are really, really good at, like, uh, fixing cars. Some of the best mechanics I've ever met are super ugly. She's part black? Okay. What was she? Uh, she was a prosecutor for the um, D district attorney, right? She was district attorney uh, prosecutor for a while. Like, that I care about significantly more than I care about whether or not she's black or not. Because I feel like just, like, colour just muddies the water at some point. It's unnecessary. Uh, although, if they are lying about their race for votes, that does kind of, like, show a side of somebody that you should probably take into account, right? People turned on her because she always identified as Indian. Look at her family. I've never seen her family. I've seen her, uh, like, qualifications and stuff like that, but um, I don't think a single one of them was really family-related. As far as I'm aware, she's just the, the most qualified person to actually run a country at this point, in comparison to everybody else. Like, Bobby Kennedy Jr., he does look like a really, really, really good alternative option from the major parties, but he's just not going to get in. Realistically, he's not actually going to get the votes required. All right, so this is all set up now. Uh, let's go ahead and chuck some ice on top of here, and hopefully it'll divert it into this little machine that we have over here. We're probably going to need to stimulate it a little bit with a stimmy. Go ahead, chuck a, a little stimmy in here. Ah, oh, the frame drop! Oh my god, it's going like crazy. Damn it, it stopped literally just before it was about to feed itself. Oh, come off it! Did I make a mess? Oh, I did. What the hell? Why is this... Oh, don't tell me we need another elbow to... Oh, poos. We didn't put this elbow here right underneath this. Oh no! Oh no! Oh well. Okay. Frame drop! Is it gonna crash? Who knows? I'm moving the mouse! Okay, no crash, just a huge goddamn mess. Oh no. I'll never vote for someone that laughs about everything. It doesn't. Isn't that like Trump's thing? Is it, isn't Trump's thing that he never takes anything seriously? Oh my god! What a mess! Uh, that one's too big to waste, though. We, we're actually going to leave that one on the um, on the belt right there. Actually, we'll get all of these really big ones on the belt here. Yes. We're not going to waste anything too uh, too big. Okay, we forgot to hook in the uh, pipe required. A little embarrassing. 
And we've jumped, we've dumped our load all over the floor, which is uh, not the best. <laughs> but it could be significantly worse, right? We could have dumped literally like everything onto the ground and then created a doom loop with the game where it tries to load in all of the resources and everything just falls out. Right, good. Drop it all out in there. And we'll get this gigantic lump as well. That's going to process into a huge ore. Nice. And we'll get a lot of this pretty much just moved up here. I think these machines are just popping out like a bunch of little crappy bits. Actually, you know what? Let's see if the magnet on the stick works for this. It probably does. It probably works for this. And we probably don't need to do it all by hand anymore. You ask her something extremely important. She just laughs and has no answer. Just like Biden. Oh, no. She got the same people. Oh, sh crap. Whoops. She got the same people shooting for her then. That's uh, not so great. That's really bad, actually. <laughs> all right, good. Move all of this water over here because we don't need it where it is. Boop. Good enough, honestly. Oh, such a mess. No! Okay, let's try and get this back up onto the conveyor belt. Oh, that, that, that kind of worked. That kind of worked. All right, let's go ahead and just throw this on the ground. No wonder it almost crashed the game. Look at this crap. My God. Just yaps about random things to detour the question and distract you from her intentions. Yeah, that is like a, that, that's like a traditional Democrat thing though, right? Republicans are just all like, how dare you ask? And Democrats are all like, ha, you shouldn't have asked. Like that kind of stuff. I learned that from Hillary Clinton. She was she was a bit of a master manipulator at that. All right, let's put a lift on here and hope it functions. Did we put the lift up topside? We did. Let's grab this. Put it back where it belongs. And then we're probably just going to use that little clear all chunks command. Okay, I'm actually afraid to hit the, hit the gas on this now. Ah, oh, well, let's do it. Let's hit the gas. Ah, I've hit the ceiling. That's not good. I'm also stuck. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, chuck something in here. Okay, good. It's feeding itself. Ish. It's feeding itself. Ish. Oh, pissed off. <laughs> My God. <laughs> okay, it feeds itself like nine times out of ten. Let's go ahead and just like... We'll clear the chunks. Clear all ice and frost rocks. Yes. Done. All right. Good. We've cleaned up. Oh, that was so yuck. It was so yucky. All right, good. So this actually functions. Good, good. So this should fire straight in there. Okay, it is doing it, but it's kind of missing every time. Hmm. There's got to be a better way of kind of like perpetuating this ice machine. Although, now, what the hell is this doing here? We can actually go ahead and chuck in some more machinery to start mining. So but now we want to take our resources, right? We want to get like a, like a hook. We want to get a, a hook that turns this entire thing off that isn't literally just this outtake pipe uh, taken out of the ground. Ah. Trump's very serious. He might smile, but he takes everything into account. Yeah, but he's also kind of like, he shows his hand as to how much he doesn't know about literally anything. Although in saying that, uh, here in New Zealand, our current government, I keep saying this as well, our current government are the first government that I have ever seen in my life and in the life of my father, my grandfather, my great-grandfather. Some of them are dead. That's how old it goes back. Um, it, this is the stupidest, most idiotic government that we've ever came across. Usually, a government is kind of like... When they're stupid, it's suspicious stupid because they, they kind of benefit from, a, from something and... Then they just, they just feign ignorance. That's usually how it goes, right? But the government that we currently have now actually do not know what the hell they are doing. They, they do not understand what the hell is going on at any given time. Uh, they don't really understand laws. They get told by these, like, Twitter lawyers that uh, they've got entitlements, and then they go claim on them. They don't verify this, and then uh, when everybody finds out, everybody's all like, yo... This is highly unethical and immoral, and also you're a piece of human garbage. And they're just all like, sorry, I didn't know. You know, that's that's always their defense, is I didn't know. Our finance minister doesn't even know what Bitcoin is, and she doesn't understand a VPN. She was asked both of these during the election. She couldn't answer either of the questions. She gave an incorrect definition of VPN. It was like an online uh, store or something like that she was defining. It was just absolute brain-dead garbage that came out of their mouths and they got elected because the last government didn't do as well as everybody wanted. Why have we got this one core? 
Gotta be a hole somewhere, right? Maybe not. That could be ineptitude or ignorance. No, it's definitely ineptitude. Like, they are, by definition, a buffoon of a government. They don't know what the hell they are doing. Somebody has uh, been coaching them behind the scenes, and it's very clear that since those people coaching them could not get what they want, because basically when they got voted in, they wanted two things, which was the sale of land in New Zealand to people who are not New, New Zealand citizens, uh, which nobody in New Zealand wants, so they'd probably have to have some kind of financial backers doing that. Online store, yeah, I know, it's stupid, isn't it? That's what a VPN is in the eyes of um, Nicola Willis, our, our financial minister. Sounds exactly like Kamala. Yeah, but imagine if Kamala was just dumb. If, if you, if, like, you could say, oh, yeah, politicians, they don't know what they're doing, and, and therefore they are dumb. But these guys are actually sub-80 IQ dumb. I don't know how the hell they got in there. Anyway, these are financial backers who wanted uh, two things, one of which the housing sales obviously abandoned them because they were being coached right at the start. They had really good charisma. They had really good marketing. Obviously, the people themselves didn't know what the hell they were doing. It was quite obvious that somebody had just shoved their hand up their asses and was, you know, parading them around like a puppet, um, probably for the uh, land sales. And after that fell through, these idiots, these idiots who very clearly do not know what they're doing, went and started taking endorsements from tobacco companies, which just doesn't make sense. We've been a smoke-free country for 35 years. We've been passing legislation to try and get cigarettes banned outright in New Zealand. And here they are, reversing 30 years of engineering so that they can stay afloat as a government for a couple of months. The powers that, that be put these people in power? No, the ignorance of the people who didn't know just how bad these people were at their jobs put them in power. Because behind the scenes, there were two people who were kind of like coaching... Um, very specifically, the frontline ministers, uh, Chris Luxon, Nicola Willis, and a couple of others, uh, one of them was a revolting lady that New Zealand uh, has always been better without, uh, and her name is... Oh, Patty something. Uh, I can't remember her name. She's a, she's a revolting uh, worm of a lady. She used to be um, kind of like prison minister, uh, the person who manages prisons and stuff. And she single-handedly turned our prisons into some of the most hellish places on Earth, comparable to, not Guantanamo Bay, but comparable to, like, Alcatraz and stuff like that, where you could actually expect a shanking once a week. And it was just a lottery on whether or not it was you, because uh, a lot of the prisoners had, like, undirected anger and stuff like that. So uh, she was behind the scenes. And John Key as well, a very charismatic uh, leader who led the country for three consecutive terms... He was okay at his job, but what he really had at his advantage was charisma. Uh, like, you could very easily picture yourself going out and having a beer with John Key. And that would basically be what uh, solidified his three terms. And then he left. And then the National Party lost because uh, the person who replaced him, um, Mr. 20%, got 20% of the votes one, one year. And then he uh, broke his own record of uh, 20% and got 18% of the votes. People really did not want him elected. But these two people, uh, they were very clearly coaching uh, the National Party while during the election, the National Party were looking on paper very, very good. They had these policies that kind of make a lot of sense. Ultimately, a few months after the National Party got in, everything started falling apart, and it's very clear that uh, John Key and whoever else was coaching them just kind of left out of frustration. And now uh, the National Party has been left with a government, and they have no idea what the hell they are doing. They are in way over their heads. Like Nancy Pelosi. I've got no idea who she is. But if she is literally just like the kind of person who sees a social issue and then thinks, you know what would fix that? Another, another highway. Another highway would actually fix that entire situation. Like, unironically as well. I'm not joking. If you look at kind of like Auckland's crime rates, because they've been skyrocketing across uh, national uh, terms. They usually do when you, you don't put any government money or government subsidies into social initiatives, right? Into, into governing. If you, if you don't invest money into governing the country, then you get crime. So Auckland's crime has been on the rise for quite a while. And unfortunately, at this point, uh, the National Party are still trying to find the money to create a bridge that separates having to drive through the crime-ridden part of Auckland so that the rich people can uh, go straight to the central hub without having to look at any of the crime. So that's that's pretty much what their entire thing is. They, they build roads in between areas where you would not have to look at crime. 
That's essentially how they get elected every single time as well. And at this point, they've got an $8 billion hole, which is enormous for our country, considering we are 1 60th the size of uh, the US. We're smaller than any state. And we've got two land masses. One third of our population also live in Auckland, New Zealand, which is pretty funny as well. This is actually functioning pretty well, this whole setup. The bucket's obviously not ideal, but like it's still going. But yeah, uh, uh, their whole thing is like build roads, Oh, well, yeah, I know. Eight billion dollars is huge, and they've been lying about it, too. Um, one of their ministers mentioned last year it was a five billion dollar hole, and then some, uh, uh, some guy who was interviewing him said, five billion? Wow! And then the lady uh, said, yeah, I know, it's over our estimations, but we, we want to go high than low for, for holes in the budget. And the interviewer ambushed her with, yeah, yeah, it's, it's crazy, because uh, the actual numbers are close to eight billion dollars. And uh, she came out with, well, the numbers I have are five billion. And this interviewer was saying, uh, oh, well, actually, we, we've, we've crunched the numbers here at, here at the department. It didn't actually take that long either because the budget's public and it's, it's eight billion minimum. So um, they were estimating it's going up to 13 billion sometime this year. Pretty crazy. And they still want to build that goddamn road. They still want to build the road in between the, uh, the rich part of Auckland and also the central area so that they don't have to look at the crime. It's quite revolting. It, they obviously don't know what the hell they're doing, and they're just asking all these out-of-touch rich people who are the only people who act, who would talk to them, right, who have the time to talk to them. They're asking all these out-of-touch rich people, like, hey, what should we do? And these out-of-touch rich people are saying, oh, I don't really like that there's lots of immigrants in the country, or I hate having to look at crime on my way to my CEO position and my, and my job running a country. It's not easy making seven figures a year. The best that these people could do is not steal a car while I'm looking. You know, that kind of stuff. Uh, uh, those are the kind of people that, that really benefit from national. And um, it's not going to change anytime soon. Anyway, again, it's getting really divisive. And I've kind of uh, spent a lot of time just crapping on them. They're not ultimately a bad part. Like, we, down here in Dunedin, we've got one representative named Michael Woodhouse. And this is going to be a hot take for Dunedinites. But Michael Woodhouse has done a huge amount of good for our community down here. Significantly more than most of our MPs. Which is a, a bit of a hot take. Because what he is, is a businessman... And ultimately, business people don't really get seen in a good light, even if they end up making a community flourish. Uh, this guy, really, he's just a staple in, um, in Dunedin's business. In fact, we probably wouldn't have uh, fibre internet without him. Because uh, to my understanding, it was his department that kind of liaised that whole thing. And a lot of other really, really big infrastructure things. A lot of free initiatives, too. Okay, let's go ahead and pick this up. A lot of business support, too. Uh, stuff that you would pay for in the U.S., Something you'd paid thousands of dollars for in the US, like heaps and heaps of money. Are we just waiting now? We probably just want to take this bucket of crap and then... Oh, that's right. We were going to get the water hook from the back of the truck or from this pile right here. We we're going to put it right here. Oh, it fits in the lava. That's cool. I like that. All right. We'll turn that whole thing off. Excellent. Why are we still getting resources? Hello? Why are you still pumping out resources? You're not powered. What? Or did I just turn it the... Oh, I, I turned it on. Okay, that should be good, right? So if we go ahead... Grape unaliving. Oh, I don't, I don't think it's that bad. Like, it's, uh, that kind of stuff is not on the streets. In New Zealand, that kind of stuff is, like, kept behind closed doors pretty frequently. Uh, but, it, yeah, like, New Zealand has some of the most shocking crime rates in the world, including seppuku, which, believe it or not, is actually a crime. Right, so we want to take this and we want to start melting it down to ingots, but we don't necessarily want to worry about... We need a sorting system. We, we're at the point where we actually do need a sorting system, unfortunately. And it's probably just going to have to be a real basic one, right? Because all of this crafting stuff, it's all well and good, but it doesn't... Doesn't really do a hell of a lot. Okay, I'm gonna leave this here. We're gonna turn the machine on. Why don't we go up to the crafting area, up on top of the mountain. We'll see exactly what is required to craft some of these machines. Actually, we don't own any, so we're gonna have to go back to this, the tier one store down here in the bubble, and then we're gonna have to uh, basically figure out what we need. 
But yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty shocking what New Zealand becomes under a national government. It's, it's pretty crazy. It'd be like, um, currently as it stands, like, usually it's like, you've got a, a real charismatic guy that knows how to turn heads. Like, Trump definitely has that, but here in New Zealand, we've got Luxon, who is, quite frankly, a thumb with eyes in an oversized suit. And his qualifications were that he was the CEO of Air New Zealand, and he left right before Air New Zealand went bankrupt and got into politics. Guess who bailed out Air New Zealand when it was uh, facing solvency? The New Zealand government. That's right. The New Zealand government owned 51% of Air New Zealand. Chris Luxon's old uh, airline that he was the CEO of right before it went bankrupt. That is unfortunate because it seems like he knew that it was going to go bankrupt, right? He knew that the airline was going to go bankrupt and then he got into politics knowing that he could buy it for pennies on the dollar, which is insider trading. So everything that he has built a foundation on as a prime minister was on felonies. Insider trading we take really seriously here in New Zealand. So I'm so shocked that Chris Luxon slipped through the cracks. He knew. He knew that that company was going to go bankrupt. He left it right before it went bankrupt. Uh, we don't want to be here, do we? We want our money. That's probably why we're right here at this location. Please don't tell me we left our money at the other shop. I think we may have. Ah, poos, we did. You'll All right, that's fine. Eyes. We'll drive to the other one. A thumb with eyes. Here's a thumb with eyes. You Google him, you will see a thumb with a couple of really tiny googly eyes put on them. Then, uh, when you think of that googly eyes, when you think of that thumb with the googly eyes, imagine it's really greedy as well. It's really, really greedy. He keeps ca taking, like, tax cuts for himself. He keeps, like... Oh, there was what? Uh, there's a few issues that uh, he was specifically a, per a perpetrator of. Like, there was a government subsidy... To pay for the first $15,000 of your first electric vehicle, it's kind, of, it's kind of like a clean, green initiative thing. And Chris Luxon scrapped it because he was all like, we don't want to pay for this. And it turns out his wife claimed on that to buy a Tesla. So uh, immediate hypocrisy straight off the bat. Um, there was a legal loophole where you can claim a subsidy for uh, rent. When you are renting a house as a prime minister and the... Uh, the, the uh, prime, uh, the I think it's prime house, has been condemned. So he went through the prime house and looked for things that would have made it condemned. It hadn't been renovated in a long time, but it sure as hell wasn't condemned. And then he was like, "Oh yeah, I'll just take that 52k because I don't want to live here. I'd rather live in my house because uh, my house is so much nicer." So he took he took that uh, that fifty two thousand dollars subsidy and then he paid it to himself because he was the landlord of the place that he was staying in at the time. So again. More, yeah, he is a bit of a loser, honestly. I don't know what the hell is wrong with him. He goes out of his way to make sure that everybody around him has to pay for uh, all of his entitlements. It actually led on to some direct quotes from him as well, where he was saying like, oh, I, I, why are you asking why I'm claiming on this entitlement? It's an entitlement. I'm, I'm entitled to it. Like, <laughs> he... People kept ambushing him, saying, don't you find this morally abhorrent? To be claiming on subsidies that you don't need and, and that only really lines your pocket uh, uh, compared to the half a million dollar salary that you earn each each year as prime minister. And uh, all he said was, yeah, but I'm, I'm entitled to it. I'm, I'm sure that anybody else in my position would claim on this legal loophole because it's, it's an entitlement and anybody can claim on it as long as they are a prime minister and they find the legal loophole. It hasn't been claimed on ever, either, by the way. Yeah, he, he claimed on it. It sucks. It sucks that he did that. Uh, yeah, quite frankly, he's just a goblin of a man. Very gross person. I don't I don't really want any <laughs> part of him in, in any kind of government, right? He just... He gives the ick. That's a, that's a good way of saying it. He, he gives the ick. So do the controls of this truck. I'm still trying to figure out how to... My God, go backwards in a straight line. Uh, we want to go to what looks like the tier 1 store right here. I know it doesn't look like much, but they are selling machine parts right here. I think that requires Clautium, which we do have a huge amount of. So let's go ahead and just buy a bunch of these. Huh? huh? Oh, that's right. We only got 23 bucks in here. We'll also get a couple of munches. No, we'll get a couple of uh, grinders, I think. Oh, that requires a lot of stuff, actually. Yeah, okay. I mean, like, we can definitely afford that. I'm going to make a couple of these machines, right? And the reason for that is we kind of want to 
see what god rolls we could possibly get with the resources we have. Because if we get a really, really good grinder, we might take it with us when we go to a different place. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of things that he's done wrong. Quite a few, actually. Like, a, a lot of things that he's done wrong. And a lot of people are just like, they, they're too busy to investigate him. And now at this point, he now also pays all of the wages of everybody who does the investigating. So it leaves a lot of room for corruption. I'm not saying he's corrupt. I'm not saying he's corrupt. That would be, that would be, uh, it's an allegation, right? It's, uh, I'm, I'm not directly accusing him, but he it did commit a felony. Right, he, he did do insider trading um, so that he could buy a bankrupting company that he knew was bankrupting as a government entity. Very gross. Very gross of him. And I'm pretty sure after he leaves, he's just going to take... He's, he's going to buy back his own company, right? He's going to buy back in New Zealand and instate himself as the permanent CEO again. What a twit. Oh, yes, when he was working at Air New Zealand as well uh, as CEO... Um, a lady, an ear hostess, wanted his autograph because, uh, you know, CEO of the company, it's a, it's a big thing. And he said absolutely not, and then called her a glorified waitress uh, before telling her to get back to work. So he is, act like, in his spare time, he is actually a garbage person. I don't think he's ever going to have any kind of redemption arc. I don't think he's really capable of doing so. But he's a, he's a bit of a meme down here in, um, in Dunedin, New Zealand, because we're a university town, and we tend to be quite... Uh, liberally thinking so whenever somebody does something like Chris Luxon does we don't usually think oh well he'll do better next time we usually think what an incompetent ass hat what the hell is he doing running the country sadly we can't do anything because we're a tiny town bit of a shame but you know it is what it is and the Dunedin University has been in the top 100 since 1989 so for, for a long time globally globally top 100 I think we uh, I think we lose a place every couple of years but we, we kind of have had our university in the top 100 since its instatement back in... No, it was 1869. It was when it was instated. It's a funny number. Okay, now that we're here, we need the resources. So let's go ahead and swap the buckets out with something that we aren't particularly filling up with. Uh, I don't really care about the sorting system just yet. We're probably just going to hand sort everything that we need out of here initially. And then we should be fine. All right, we'll wait for all of this to continue onwards. All of this crap is filling up the grinder, probably congesting it. We'll pick this up. A uh, little bit of frame drop. That's absolutely fine, though. I don't mind. And we'll put this one right there. Actually, probably a little bit too far. We'll put that there. That's good. Okay. Let's take this bucket of enormous amounts of wealth and uh, come up here, I suppose. We'll turn this back on so it's still generating resources. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lava. That scared the crap out of me. I thought that I was being shot off into space. Which I kind of was. But maybe not. Okay, so we want the iron first, because that is one of the requisites. Let's get a bucket here. Because it spews out these resources over here at an alarming rate. This one here can go right here. Now, the curve to actually get these resources into this bucket is really low, because it just dumps them straight downwards. It's a little bit of a shame. All right. We're dumping all of our hand our resources onto this hand sorter right now. And three, two, one, go. We've crashed it. We've done it. Oh no, here we go. Ah, perfect. Slam dunk every single one of those resources. Nice. Okay, so we can actually reuse this bucket just over not the gold. Don't really care about that. Probably care a lot more about actually that needs to be significantly further away. Put that there. And this one needs to be really close, because it's the it's the dump hole. Mm, not quite. Almost. There we go. Good, so now we need Clausium. I think this is gold. Yeah, that's gold. Let's just leave that, I don't know, in the rejects bucket, I suppose. And now that we've got all that, let's go ahead and drop all of this into nowhere. We're actually going to find some Cloudium first. What's this? Cloudium. Good. Let's drop this right here. So it sorts it. So it knows what to sort. And we're going to dump this right on top of here. Done. Boom. Sorted. Okay, now we get to find out exactly how much weight of these resources we have. So we get to find out exactly how much of these machines we can make. Let's weigh this on the scales, which I've completely misplaced. Where are they? Scales? I haven't buried them, have I? But they're over here the hell are the scales? What? 
<laughs> there they are. Okay, so we have 28 Klausium. That is pistol. I don't think we can actually make a single machine with that. Find out. Uh, so that is a mm, that is a drill. We need a hundred. We don't have anywhere near that. Not even remotely close. Okay, hopefully we can maybe like... So we don't have enough to do that. We can definitely still keep these resources though. And we can possibly think about getting the other stores made up, right? So let's try weigh this. How much of this iron do we have? We have 785 kilos. Again, I don't think that's enough for a single drill. Oh no, it's enough for one drill. And we can make a grinder, but I'm not going to just yet. Okay. So we probably want to go and we need a 20 kilo bar. And then we also need... What else do we need? We need a 20 kilo bar and we also need a 180 weight brick hard stone what's my dingle, right? Okay, let's uh... No. Let's not put that there. Let's, let's jump on top of this. Let's see where we dump from here. So we want this to be basically here. Alright. Let's get a bunch of these in here so we can get a weight of 20. What is that? 19. One more. Perfect. Done. All right. That's all of the iron that we can spare. Let's drop that there. We'll go ahead and we'll smelt this into an ingot in the furnace just over yonder's breath. Drop that on the ground. Drop that on the ground right here. Drop this straight into it. Boop. Missed. That's embarrassing. Go ahead and just drop that. Nice. And then we'll put this back on the furnace here until it melts down into a nice little liquid. I want to make sure that last one is melted too. Should be good though. All right, let's go ahead and just stick with this. Perfect. I'm just going to drop this right here. Good. We'll take this ingot and we will go and craft the tier two store with it. But first, we need more hardstone. Where's the bucket of rejects? I'll just like fist them in one by one. Well, maybe we don't need to do that. Maybe we can actually just like, what is this? That's probably gold. That's cloudium. This is a hardstone. It's over here, right? Nope, that's uh, iron. This is hardstone here. So, we want the output to be about here, so it can just dump it all. Actually, we don't want that bucket to be used whatsoever. We need another couple of buckets, don't we? We're basically kind of floundering here with our buckets. Let's go ahead and drop this one where it needs to be. Maybe... Output? Output. Okay. Output, and this is what we need it to be. We don't really need another bucket of iron, so let's just go ahead and consolidate all of that into a single bucket here. And we drop all of our resources. The rejects are going in. What do we get? Oh, piss. Oh, uh, now we have to uh, not only pick all of this crap up, but we also have to fist it all into the bucket as well. We need a 180 weight brick. That's essentially what we're uh, going for right now. Now, I think a lot of these are pretty hefty, so we're probably going to get one just with the... Where's the goddamn magnet on a stick? We're probably going to need to kind of, like, just get the stuff off of the ground, and then we'll dump that into the machine. Hopefully, that'll be enough, right? It's always more than you think. Boop. There we go. Excellent. Let's take this whole bucket, and we'll get up here. We'll dump this right into the mouth. Ah, good. We got a brick, a single brick. That's all we need. Okay, so we can now make the Tier 2 shop. We have at least advanced the tier two stuff. We've, we've advanced into a new shop, so we're about to see what we unlock, which is also very exciting, isn't it? Okay. Let's come all the way through here, and there is a bubble over there. I do like the Aurora Borealis. I wonder if the developers actually programmed that or if it's kind of like a ripped asset. Oh, it's hard to tell. Looks really nice though. It's very clear that they put a lot of love and effort into this DLC. I also don't really want to say so, so confidently, but I feel like this DLC is actually better than the base game. It's just got more in it. I don't want to sound like a bit of a pretentious asshole, but the base game kind of did have its flaws, right? It, it definitely had its flaws. Okay, I'm going to refuel the uh, car as well. That's why I've just stopped in the middle of this pile of lava. Get that. Oops, okay, never mind. I've just bounced all around. Get that bucket, and we'll drop this into here, like so. Nice. Uh, please don't bounce me. Excellent. Get that bucket of lava right there, and we should be golden. Nice. I like that. Let's go ahead and drive back up to the city. Actually, we can go this way. We can go straight. Very nice. 
Mmm, I like this. Okay, good. And now we can craft the tier 2 store, which is just over the corner and around over here. Right there. I'm not going to crash into it because that would be a waste of um, whiplash. Oh, piss. That's not good. All right, that's not what we're crafting. We're, uh, we're going to go craft something else. I, th I think that literally anything else would probably be better to craft, right? Maybe, what about this ticket office? Ah, okay, so 200 iron bar. We need 10 kilos of clausium. This was the place that we needed the hearthstone brick for, and I'm probably getting it mixed up with the original uh, tier one store, right? So we'll leave that in there. We need 200 kilo iron bar, which we can get. Clausium, we need 10 kilos of clausium as well. All right, 200 iron, 10 kilos of clausium. We'll go and do that now because we have that over at our little location. Nice. Okay, well, it's probably going to take us a lot longer to get 200 kilos of iron, though. Let's be completely honest. Might have to use the magnet on a stick technique to kind of, like, divide the ores in half. But I won't be too surprised if we have to uh, kind of, like, fist them all in hand by hand. Okay, so... We are looking at a brand new store. We're going to get that done in this session. Don't know if we'll get the third tier done. I wanted the third tier done, but we did kind of sort out automation, which is very cash money. Okay, let's get this forge, and we'll actually move it closer to the work area that we need it at. Good. And let's go ahead, grab this pot right here. And we'll drop it down here. Done. Nice. Uh, we've probably also got a spare bucket. Ah, uh, that's got a large ingot in it. Let's see how heavy this ingot is, actually. Maybe we'll skip a lot of progress just by using this ingot straight off rip. 158 kilos is still pretty good. Damn, that is really close. Uh, right, so let's get our... Ah, oh, God, no. Oh, you know what, actually? Probably doesn't matter that much, does it? We can probably just separate out this iron. Oh, we can't, though. Who's? Okay, we have to do it by hand, unfortunately. What is that? 160? This won't take long. 163? Yeah, this definitely won't take long. So we just need to get a bunch of these iron in here. In fact, it's probably not going to be too bad if we get some hard stone accidentally in there anyway, because it won't melt down in the furnace. So we can just dump it from that pot. That's obviously hard stone. I'm not going to stick it in there if I can help it. Okay, let's stick that there. Another little lump right there. 181. Actually, this is not going to take anywhere near as long as I thought it would. Okay, I'll drop that in there. We are now at 187. That is 189. Beautiful. And we'll drop that one there. I've got another bit of iron here. That's a tiny bit of iron, but, you know, iron's iron. Drop that in there. 195. Pretty good weight so far. And we're at 198. Probably one more big chunk. This looks like the one. Done. 200.08. Good. Let's go ahead and drop this into the furnace. Hopefully I won't miss. Some of it missed. <laughs> Some of it actually missed. I can't put it in there because the bar is actually in the way. Excellent. Great. So, now we can get our cast. Actually, let's repair this system right here so that we're always pumping out resources. Great. And we'll get our cast right here. So we want to pour this into the cast. This is a 200 kilo brick of iron. Perfect. And now we need 10 kilos of cladium, which is going to be a little bit harder to get. Or is it? How much have we got here? 28 kilos. That's pretty good. Okay, we'll use this as kind of like the dump then. Uh, let's put this one on top of here. And we'll put this one here. Okay. Uh, three, six, nine, ten. Oh, nope. One more. Boom. Overkill, but it's perfect. It's exactly what we want. Excellent. Done. Dump that straight in there. And now we want to cast it into an ingot. Great. We've got everything we need. Let's get these into another bucket. Put that there, put that there, and then we'll take this over to the construction job. Great, I'm 10 minutes behind. I'll catch up. I had a call. You're absolutely fine, my dude. Don't worry about it. You're not missing a huge amount. I'm basically just like Lego talking about whatever prompts me at this point. Uh, while we kind of like polish off a little bit more automation, we're waiting for resources to generate at this point. And that's basically what we got to wait for. Because I think we sold a huge load for 14 grand. 
we kind of lost all of the resources that we had as a consequence and we can't craft anything they're actually significantly more expensive than i, I thought they would be okay coming around here we now have all of the ingots that we need for the ticket boot so by the end of the session we'll at least see moats island hopefully we'll have enough money to be able to pay for it where is our money oh it's probably all the way back at the uh the other village right why do we ever take our money with us why are we so stupid uh not that one not that one that one perfect this one right here we want to set up this little bit right here a little bit a little bit of productivity right here i'm gonna move this away from there okay good we've got one little ingot Boop. put that in there and we've got one more ingot that has to go in there right here 200 kilos boom i have the world's worst back perfect boom awesome we've got a ticketing office so we can now get vehicles sweet jesus i'm surprised that that's taken so long honestly your organization is on point hey, oh is it <laughs> oh hey what's cracking lady the hell is this it's supposed to be a cash register or a ticket dispenser i'd say right so we need 200 bucks ah oh, there's that iron ingot that i was missing let's go ahead and just drop this here so we need 200 tokens we actually have that right here i think no we got 100 tokens but we also have enough uh kind of like resources as well uh we don't want to go that way actually it's probably closer to go this way we have enough kind of quests to get ourselves all those tokens we just have to make a couple of gold daggers which i'm very happy to do let's do that we'll do that right over here and should be golden to go to moats island which i'm very excited to see I'm also excited to see whether or not it removes the invisible wall in between our land and Moats Island. Because quite frankly, that's just an annoying little little issue. It would be nicer if they made Moats Island kind of like just flat out inaccessible from where we are. And then just had one of those gigantic platforms that move move items from like place to place, like was in Ice Hell. And it's already programmed into the game. You don't have to worry about it. Right, excellent. I suppose they already programmed the ship that takes you to the DLC and they were all like, oh god, I wish I could make people use this more often. Oh, almost missed the turn off. And let's spin around here. Excellent. Great. We're on the back of the ute, shaking around like a uh, like an anxious puppy. Uh, so we probably want to keep these schematics on the back of the truck, don't we? Uh, we want to do these quests. There's one right here. This is an axe. It requires two 80 kilo gold ingots, which we could definitely do. And this one right here, 96 kilos, just flat out. Perfect. Both of those will get us a ticket. Right. I like this. Let's take this close to our work area, right over here. Maybe like that. Is that the right way? Nope. We want the uh, the spike facing outwards. Maybe like yeah. Perfect. Okay, the reason I stick it here is because we actually, we can set up ingots to kind of like heat in here before we stick them on the, on the gigantic anvil right there. Where did the okay originate from? Oh, I, it, it came from me not wanting to uh, swear. <laughs> so every now and then, like, I'd just be all like, okay, bugger. It would, like, I'd fill in sentences like that. So I just started filling it in with um, a nice little high-pitched ad lib. Excellent. Great. Great, great, great. No, there's not like any big story behind it. I just started doing it one day and it stuck. Uh, so we do have a lot of iron here that we probably could consolidate into a bucket. We want gold though. Oh, we actually have a gold bucket, don't we? We accidentally filled an entire bucket with gold. Where'd it go? No, that's core stone. Where's the gold bucket? More hard stone. What the hell is the gold bucket? Where'd it go? I'm certain we had one. It's just hard stone and iron. This one's clautium. Do we not have a gold bucket? I was almost certain we did. We didn't stick it down here, did we? Oh, we must have. That's almost entirely gold. All right, let's turn off the sorting system so we can replace the the bucket. Please? There we go. Good. A little bit fiddly. A little bit fiddly, that little icon there. Okay, don't feel bad about using this bucket. Probably need a couple more buckets. Quite frankly. Anything else going to be processed? No. Good. Go ahead, grab this, and we'll grab this one. We'll stick it right there. Yes. And we are going up. 
Good. I almost just dumped that on the ground. I would have actually dumped that on the ground too if I had interacted with that while holding this bucket. It would have been very close. So now we need an empty bucket for the gold. Got some cloudium in here. Actually, that's bugger all cloudium. Let's just go down here and we'll dump this right there. And we should be good. Now, I know that we're probably kind of like choked off from the rest of the world by the height limit that we could have in the mine. But we want to set up a Moats Island, I think, because that's where all the cars are. And we could always just go on a trip and go and get some other things if we ever need it. Good, let's get this. I'll just drop this here. I hope that is going to dump all of the resources into there. Because it's going to be embarrassing if it doesn't. Another empty bucket here. Great. Uh, this is going to be shooting from a ugh, distance. There's that hiccup that I was expecting. Uh, let's dump this in. Frame drop. Boop. Wow, I'm actually genuinely surprised that all of that landed. Okay, what about this one? Has this one got a bunch of stragglers in it too that we can kind of divert into... Into the hand sorter? Yes! Oh, almost got me. Put that bucket there then. Good, so we've got some gold, and since we've got these scales, how much gold do we have? We probably have absolute arse load. 816 kilos, that's so much. We don't have as much as uh, we spent in one go though once. Okay, let's heat this up. Because we're gonna it just drop gold into it. Where are those quests? We need the quest scrolls. Right here. We'll grab these. Okay, so we need an axe that requires two ingots, and we also need the- oh, poos. I fell down. I'm gonna use the unstuck button because I'm lazy. Right here, done. That actually put us further away than I thought it would. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Uh, we also need this hammer. Tried to grab it. There we go. We need this on the blacksmithing anvil. Hopefully we can just tip it on its end, but we could not. That's a shame. I'll grab this one. So, 96 weight for a dagger. That's a dagger, perfect. We'll go ahead and we'll get 96 kilos of gold. By hand, I think. Un, deux, trois, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's 21 kilos. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's 37, 18, 19. We've actually got enough gold to do both of these, by the way. We've got enough gold to get all three of the ingots required for both of the weapons for the quests that these guys are giving us. And then we're gonna have heaps and heaps of tokens. 71 kilos, okay. Ichi, ni, san, chi, go, roko. I can't remember what seven is. Hachi, oh, I can't remember what nine is either. <laughs> Order. 96, okay, that's too heavy. 94, too heavy. 91, perfect. Okay, we'll drop this into the furnace right here. Boop. We probably want to get ourselves an auto smelter. We can definitely afford it, and at this point it's almost taking the piss that we haven't done it. Okay, let's heat this bad boy up. We'll drop it straight on here, and then we use the blacksmith's hammer. Oh, damn it. <laughs> this be hotter. So close. All right, let's just leave this in there while we get an 80 kilo ingot kind of uh, set up here. One, two. By the way, this is actually how jewelers kind of weigh the jewelry. They get tiny little beads of silver and gold, and then they weigh them on a scale like this, a precision scale. It's quite interesting. I've, I've done a little bit of jewelry crafting in my time. I've never done it with, like, silver or gold, but I've, I've had the luxury of doing it with, like, kind of crap tier minerals. You just gotta melt them down. You melt them down into a cast, and then you polish it afterwards. That's, that's generally most of jewelry making. And then you gotta uh, bend a lot of crap as well with the pliers and such. That's 87. That's way too heavy. What's this? 85, still way too heavy. 82. Pretty sure there is an 81 kilo requirement for one of these. Yes, there is. Perfect. I'm gonna go ahead, drop this into the forge. And let's go ahead, put this right there, and then we'll hit it with a hammer. Mm -hmm. Boom. Huh? Mm -hmm. What do you mean, ha? Huh? What are you talking about? There's only one material on this thing. Gold bar for a dagger. What are you talking about, huh? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh -huh. What the hell? Uh -huh. This is how you do it. This is how you make... 96 weight. Okay, that is definitely like 96 or more, right? Just hoping. Oh, it's 91. Okay, I was getting mixed up with the 81, so I'm actually glad I double-checked that. Uh, this is an 81 kilo ingot. Let's go ahead and knock that in there, because we have a spear bucket right here. Perfect. Ah. 
Where the hell is everyone? Sleeping? Yeah, us usually. Usually they're sleeping. Uh, here in New Zealand it's the afternoon, but I think it's like mid it's definitely in the AMs in the US. Okay. Or maybe it's later. Who knows? US is a long place. Long place to try and gauge. All right, 85 kilos. Will that do the trick? Nope, wrong one. 96 is what we need. So let's just remove one of these. 95.97? Damn, that's way too light. 95.97? Damn, that is way too light. Oh well, I'll just go with the, uh, the, what we've got here. Okay, let's go ahead and cast that one out. We'll uh, throw everything from this bucket into here. Boop. Excellent. Slam dunk every single one of those, I hope. Yep, definitely did. So this is an 80 kilo one. I'll just uh, stick that there. Let's cast this out. We'll leave that outside of the forge. And we'll heat it up like that. And then we'll leave this bucket on top of it. Hopefully it's not going to melt into the bucket, but it shouldn't. It shouldn't do so. Okay, so the next one needs to be 80 kilos. The other one that we have is 82 kilos. And we should be absolutely golden for all of these quests. What have we got? 23? That's yuck. Not quite. Nighttime here. Zealand is the future. It is the future, isn't it? It's a weird place, actually, because technically where I live is not the plus 12 GMT, like um, Wellington and... Oh, what's the other place? Auckland are. Uh, we don't have that. We have plus 13, which is really strange. Because technically, that would be tomorrow. Right? That, that would actually be tomorrow. Good. It's, it's super strange. There's like an hour difference between uh, someone on the negative 12 time scale and my time zone. Even though we're on the same line. It's super strange. You can't see past the heart, can you? Past the heart? Past the heart? Oh, right, in the, in the chat. No, I cannot. I cannot see past the heart. You're the first guy that's picked up on that as well. Congrats. Okay, so this should be dagger. We have to put it on the right place. Okay, that's a little bit needlessly fiddly. Uh, so, this one's a here. Actually, it has to be an axe anyway. We need two ingots here and here. So, since this one is 80... Okay, that one's in excess of 82, so it doesn't really matter, actually. We'll go ahead and put that into the furnace, and we'll go ahead and put this on the forge. And we also want this here on the forge as well, but we don't want it in the bucket. Whoops. Okay, we'll go ahead and just drop it on there. Is that working? Is it working? A watch pot boils faster! Yes, it does work. Excellent. Okay, so now we've got both the ingots. I'm going to throw this one into the cast because it doesn't cool any better. Both of these are in excess of what we need. Good. Okay, so when these cook up fully, we're going to throw them on the sandville. We're going to craft an axe. Then we're going to hand in a couple of quests. Huh? Bang, bang. Huh? Where's the materials? All right, let's do this. One here with our bare hands as well. That is absolute Sigma male grind set. Boom. X made. Let's go hand in these quests. Uh, I think they're both in the city as well, so we probably don't need to do too much for it. These daggers look really cool, actually. I do really like the weapons that we craft in the game. We don't really have a chance to do it much because quests are virtually useless in function. But at the same time, at the same time, it works well. It works wonders. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Like, um... I know that there's uh, points at which the chat is a bit dead, but the thing is, I'm always responding. So there's always like one or two people that'll come in every now and then just to be able to talk to me in the first place. And we have a, we have a good time like we're doing now. When you consider that those people leave and other people come in, you start to realize that there's, quite a, there's actually quite a few people that come through. Like the turnover is high. It's just the quantity of people at once, not necessarily high. Are there only so many quests, or do they just come back? I don't actually know. I know in the base game they are... They are randomized, and the reason I know that is because we tried to do a bunch of them, and they ended up being absolute ass. That guy wants an axe, and he's going to give us half a grand for it. Absolutely, my dude. Uh, don't use it. It's made of gold, so it's going to break, basically, in the first two swings. Thanks. Thank you. Well Excellent. Okay, we'll put that on our collection. We can afford a ticket now, actually, but we are going to hand in this other quest who's just ahead of us here. I'm going to hit this guy because he's, he's got a dicky haircut. Also, this guy because I don't I don't want him on the road while I'm driving through here. I'm still looking for the uh, person who gave us that quest. Get out. 
Great. I think that's the person we're about to find out, I suppose. Hello? Give me this and I'll give yep. you my tokens. Whoops. Sorry, I dropped it on the floor. Haha. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Hold up. We actually already have this quest. This lady... I am going to take the quest, obviously, because I want the tokens. Those people just flew off the screen. Yeah, they did. They did fly off the screen. They don't want to be here. They're done. They're done with the game. Uh, they are just going to go and maybe try their, their hand at a different world, even if they have to fall through this one to get to it. Where in God's name is this other person who asked for this quest? I know it's written on the uh, quest... No? Give me this and I'll give oh you my god, tokens. absolutely not, lady. That is an in-game necklace. Eat my ass. <laughs> That's what I say. She's like, can you please make this for me? I literally just responded with, eat my ass. Okay, we'll go back to the ticketing booth before I forget, and we'll get a ticket. Because we can afford to do so. The thing is, I think that the quest given might be at the other village. Because I don't see anything here other than those two twits that we've already kind of interacted with. One of which was a twit that is going to pay us for another dagger. Oh, maybe it's this twit. Hello? Twit? Where is he? Here you go. Right here. Hello? I don't suppose oh, that's that necklace lady. Voice? Piss off. Piss off, please. Okay, I'm going to launch this guy into the sky. Bye-bye. <laughs> there was a little bit of a freeze frame right in between. Jewelo, where, where the hell is this ticketing booth? We just crafted it. We just made it. There was a frame in which it, it kind of like stuttered when I knocked that guy into the sky and he had this look on his face that was like, oh no, been here before. Excuse me, sir. Paying citizens only. Uh, not there. That's right, it's built, so I'm probably driving past it. It's on the right somewhere. There it is. Right here. Excellent. Okay, let's go ahead and grab some of our tokens. 764 will do the trick nicely. Me. I'm just mooching about. That's nice. Thank you. Oh, it just dumps it on the floor. Uh. Thanks. What an asshole. What an actual asshole. Okay, let's come over here. We'll grab the ticket off of the ground because we don't have a choice in the matter. They didn't bother hand it to us. I love how they see us as dirty. But we're like, we're, we're the richest man here. Quite frankly. We, we are literally the richest person here. All right, we need to check our map to see whether or not we have to go left or right when we come out of here. Up oh, too close. All right. Right, new glade. So if we go out the... It doesn't matter where we go, actually. No, it doesn't. Okay, so we got to pick a direction. we got to go out there. And then we just got to follow the coast. Because we're basically on the opposite end that we need to be. Got enough petrol. Yes, good. Petrol. Magma. We've got magma. Okay, good. Still kind of like uh, flying through here. I don't want to say we've made enormous amounts of progress because it's been a few hours and we've only really... Build the tier... No, we didn't buy the tier 2 store, but we're going to go see Moats Island for the first time. So, this is probably going to be the point at which all of the progress starts flourishing. And the reason for that is all of the vehicles are located on Moats Island. So, we'll be able to kind of, like, excavate at a very, very alarming rate since we already have kind of, like, money sorted. Let's go up here. Come all the way up here. I wonder why that brazier is not lit. Hmm. Suspicious. Might be the work of Gaster! <laughs> yeah, it's got to be Gaster, right? Oh my god, I am scripting out the Undertale game theory right now, and I'm just realizing now that all of the things that I have been articulating, all of the things that I have been saying are put really clearly out in front of me, I realized that uh, I have not actually been wrong this whole time. Like, I had a little bit of imposter syndrome about this this game theory I'm writing. Because it's a beloved fandom, and I, I don't really want to ruin things if I don't have to, but, oh my god, the community has been asleep at the wheel for a decade. So many people have exploited the fact that people on YouTube just don't verify information when they come across it. New Island, new shop? Uh, yes? We'll have access to vehicles, and am I drinking coffee? 
No, I'm too old to get away with that. Late in the day, I am drinking a bit of a concoction of lemon ginger and... Um, there's kind of a weird thing. I don't know if you guys have it over in America. Um, a bit of a strange little ingredient. It's called water. We, we drink water here in New Zealand. It's a basic human right and it's free. So, you know... <laughs> You know, don't mean to flex or anything like that. <laughs> Sorry, that's mean. But it's all the right kinds of mean as well. Uh, yeah, New Zealand does do a couple of things, right? I suppose. Access to drinking water. It's quite nice. Health care. That's about it. That's probably, that's probably actually it. That's probably where the good stuff starts and the racism and all that stuff that New Zealand kind of gets known for when you stay here too long gets, gets into as well. Okay, so around here there should be a little doodle, a little castle that will allow us to go elsewhere. Somewhere that is not... Wait, that's not up there, is it? No, it's not... That's not the ticketing booth. That's just Gaster! Okay, we went the wrong way. We go the wrong way. The gigantic volcano is the landmark. Crazy. Crazy to think that I was actually going the wrong way. Man, look at all of this. Lemon ginger and super good for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't... I think we, like, lightly fluoridate our water here as well. Lemon and ginger... Yeah, it, it is really, really good for you. Sorry, the heart was getting in the way of the chat. It's delicious. I If I can, I'll, like, choose to have a drink of that because I'm a, I'm a belt singer and I also do deathcore vocals. So, uh... Kind of stressful on the throat. Uh, really stressful on the throat. We're going the right way? Can't tell. Can't see the volcano. But I'm not hitting any uh, alternate directions on this. What the hell have I just hit? I've just hit an invisible wall. Are you taking the piss? Where are we? Oh, we're not even remotely close. Okay. We're so far away. We are, we are so far away from where we need to be. It's crazy. All water has fluoride and pharmaceuticals in it. I don't think we've got uh, too many kind of like, um, like uh, not unclean things. We, we don't necessarily have a lot of unclean things. In fact, we probably more have an issue with unfiltered water here in New Zealand rather than actual like, you know, things being in the water that some people don't want. Because when I was growing up, I grew up in a rural town uh, not too far away from my from where I live now, Dunedin, New Zealand, called Waikawaiiti, and... Uh, essentially, when I grew up, the water filters there were just turned off because the council was trying to save money. So there was this joke in the community where, like, you'd go there and you'd get a glass of water and you'd, like, chew on it for, for a half a minute as well. It was, the, it was the crunchiest drink you could ever have. What the hell? These bones are just randomly spawning. I definitely check here. Weird. I have a well. Ooh, good choice. Good choice indeed. All I have is access to uh, clean drinking water uh, from from New Zealand's kind of like free facilities. I don't I don't pay the uh, microtransactions, and therefore I am stuck. Okay, we got ourselves a ticket. Oh, I think we can actually kind of like take a a things on the boat. Maybe we can load this thing up with all of the uh, automation that we already have. Does that actually work? Oh, I haven't tried that. Maybe we can take the things from the base game over here. Where's our ticket? Oh, poos. I've lost the ticket. There it is. Little pink thing. Uh, here? Oh, okay. ding -a -ling! We're going forward! I'm flying, Jack! Where the hell am I? I think I've accidentally... Okay, I've, I've broken the game. Oh, no. I have actually broken the game. Oh, poos. Oh, no. Oh, no. What if I unstuck while I'm on the... Oh, my God. Can I just, like, spam jump up here? Does this actually work? I know it's a little bit epileptic, but I think I've just found a way of kind of, like, not getting stuck up here. Oh, look. It's, there's an anchor over there. Nice to see what's in the boat. There's, like, a little sub layer. Okay, we've landed, I think, on a new map. Or we could just keep on looking inside of the boat. Uh, thank you, game. Can I please, uh, escape? Ooh. Have you heard of Flint, Michigan? Lead? Hi there, Logan. I haven't. Who is Flint, Michigan? 
that's not the guy who uh, got the, the rail spike through his head. And he, he went from being one of the loveliest people on earth to being an absolute piece of garbage, is he? That's not that guy. No, I'm certain it's not that guy. That guy was like a, a bit of a study of psychology of the effect of the um, personality center of the brain and when that's severed organically. Oh, it's like a racetrack. Weird. Okay. Yes! Oh, thank the Lord Jesus Christ. What is that thing? Oh, it's just a sign. No, what is that thing? My God. 4,200 buckery boos. Holy hell. Look at this thing. Jesus. It's half the size of my mother. All right. Uh, what else have we got? We've got a compactor over here, which is pretty cool. Looks like we got a, a World War II era bicycle. We've got a we've got an actual tank. We have a tank. I feel like the developers actually. Oh, that's a weird place to be stuck in. I feel like the developers did actually take a little bit of inspiration from like World War Two era um, stuff. Because it kind of does look that way, doesn't it? Okay, that's just the car we have. Okay, I think we're fine. I Hello, sir. What was there before the new Glade Dome? Well, I mean, there is no new Glade Dome here. There's no snow here either, now that I look... Well, actually, there is a little bit of snow around the place. Okay, I imagine that there is going to be a bunch of bones around here, because we did not see any other bones in the other place, unless they are actually spawning randomly, which would suck. That would be really annoying. Okay, can't see anything here. Why do they hide the view of this place from the other side? Ah. You think Hygienera is worth buying? Oh, absolutely damn well lootly. We're actually in the DLC. The DLC is 10 bucks... And I feel like the DLC is better than the base game. I can tell you exactly how many hours I've put into the game so far. Uh, 135.6 hours. Before I started streaming this, 135.6 hours I put into this game. I did buy it in 2020, though, and that is when it came out. I don't see any bones anywhere. I also don't see any... Oh, uh, no! Okay, that, that could have gone worse. Ooh, can you test drive before you buy? I don't think so, unfortunately. You have to kind of, like, know what it is. You have to know what it is before you buy. Oh, no! Ah, uh, so that's why. That's why there's a vehicle store here. Okay, we're stuck. No, I'm totally kidding. There is an unstuck button that I'm going to use. Perfect. All right, where is the mine, then? Because there's supposed to be a plot of land here that we can kind of, like, resource harvest, right? Or is there? Well, maybe there's not. No, there isn't. Right, so we can only get vehicles here. And what do the vehicles cost? Do they cost money or do they cost coins? I think it's tokens, right? The tokens are the ones that we, um, we get from quests. I think. It's pretty good for a decent open playing dredge. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a great, great DLC. I've never played dredge. That's that fishing game, right? The horror fishing game. It's been on my private list for since I saw it. It looks really good, but I also have thalassophobia, and I'm genuinely terrified of the ocean. Okay, we need this. We need 7,000 tokens. Pretty sure that the coins that we get from selling things are called just C. It's just the C, and the T is the actual kind of, like, quest items. So we now have a target. We need 7,000 of those delicious little quest items. Hopefully it's not going to charge me more tickets by going back. Oh, please don't back off the edge. Good. All right, well, we saw the island. We saw the island, and that's pretty much all we got out of this excursion, right? Now we know what to get. Now we know what costs things. So no Subnautica games for you? Oh, no, Subnautica's on there. Subnautica is definitely on the list. Uh, I'm genuinely terrified of starting that series, though, because I'm going to dump all of my time into it. So do I, but I love it. You also have thalassophobia? It's rough, isn't it? It's real rough. None of my friends understand it. My friends are all like, oh, why, don't, why aren't you afraid of the dark or something like that? And me, having done martial arts for two decades, knows that I am, in fact, the scariest thing when the lights are out. Right? <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need your eyes to fight. You need your eyes to run. So, like, all of the things that my friends always say, oh, you should, you should just, like, uh, you should be afraid of other things instead of the ocean. It's like, yeah, but I'm not. Come on, guys. I'll be there for, for Subnautica. Yeah. Yeah, I think a lot of people are going to be there for Subnautica. But I'm also working on... It's going to be a little bit, um... Kind of, like, strange to describe. I'm working on a little app 
that kind of gives you checklists. It's for games, essentially, so that you can do, like, kind of um, challenge lists or, uh, I don't know, like, trophy lists, uh, achievements, other things like that. But basically my convenience, but I'm also going to uh, stick it on the App Store when it's ready to go up. Uh, and I'll be doing some Nautica with that, as well as a, a big 100% run on Remnant and Remnant 2. All right, we're at the Baron's Harbour. We don't want to be here. We want to go and start just busting out heaps of quests, because we only have half a half a grand here in finances. We need lots more finances. I have some Nautica, but I love it too. Uh, a lot of people have been saying that I'm going to love it when I start playing it, but I don't think people quite realize just how afraid I am of the ocean. It's made to be respected, not treated. That's, that's how I see the ocean. You should keep a respectful distance away from it. And uh, to my understanding, Subnautica is kind of like, you don't have a choice, right? There's not really anywhere that you can walk on land except for a very, very few specific plot pieces. Plot pieces to the story. Okay, we're going to go this way. It doesn't really matter which direction we pick in the Barrens. As soon as we kind of like make it to the other side, it doesn't really matter anyway. We also need a foot. No, we need a lead. We found a foot. I don't know if we're going to find one in the Barrens, though. Oops. It's crashed. Ah. Oh, don't know where I am. Probably right in front of the... Yep, there's a volcano. We'll just go around this. Ah. I have it and it scares me a lot. Awesome. I was thinking about playing it in VR initially. Because uh, I do have an Oculus Quest 2. And I haven't played a lot of horror games that kind of like have got me in VR. Whatsoever. Fear of large things underneath you underwater. It's kind of like, it's, it's the ocean, like it's the summit of total of everything that's wrong with the ocean. That's what scares me. It's not like anything specific. It's like every single thing that you could encounter in the ocean. Because it's the summit of total of three of my biggest fears in the world, which is, was the dark, was up there until I kind of, you know, grew up and realized, hey, I am, I am the dark. Uh, two is the unknown. Three is uh, large bodies of water absolutely terrify me. Four, sharks. So three of those, well, I suppose all four of those are in the ocean, but the darkness one is, is just not so bad anymore. It's not so bad. I also have really good night vision, so it doesn't impact me too much. Uh, what am I doing? I basically want to go and make a 35 kilo dagger, don't I? And we also need to find out where that other lady's quest was. We did grab our quest, didn't we? The one for the 95 kilo dagger? Maybe? Didn't we? Didn't we get that? Certainly we got Let's get all these lava pipes off of here. Oh, production stopped. Let's uh, change that with a sack of tools. Where the hell is our sack of tools? Okay. I wouldn't have left them down here. There's no shot we went through four bags of tools already. There's no way in hell. I refuse to believe it. I'm, it actually makes me physically angry to think... Oh, there they are. Good. <laughs> I was about to pop a hernia. Ah. I can't see the bottom of the ocean. I can't do it. Yep, I'm exactly the same, my man. I am exactly the same. What about swimming over a large submerged object underwater in a lake or river or ocean, like wrecked ship or trees? I could... Yeah, I've, I've done a lot of kind of like face your fears style of diving. I did some surfing for a year... I liked it until I got caught in a rip once and uh, got taken about two kilometers away from land and I kind of had to uh, kick and drift sideways from the rip to, uh, rip to get out of it. Now I just kind of paddled on my board away from that. I, I got really lucky as well. Uh -huh. Sometimes a rip can like um, pull you under the water. I didn't get pulled under the water so I must have either been right on the edge or kind of been a very powerful rip. Yep, something else is broken. So I, I tried that to kind of like overcome my ocean fears and I got kind of good at surfing, but ultimately I had too many like instances where there was too much powerlessness in the ocean. So I stopped doing that. And then I start, I tried a little bit of snorkeling and diving, um, kind of it tried to get back into it and into the ocean and tried to overcome my fears, but it didn't really work out. The ocean is scary. Imagine a squid or an octopus grabs you. No life vest? Nah, you don't. You don't uh, surf with a life vest. You, you surf with like a little uh, Velcro strap, a very flimsy strap attached to your wrist. I'm only realizing now just how unsafe it is. But uh, even more so in New Zealand because there's also a lot of shores with rocks all over them. Maybe I should have looked at the places I was surfing before I was surfing. Who knows? Oh well, I'm still here now and I survived. So <laughs> and nothing is lost on the world. 
Okay, uh, so output is still good, right? Output's still good? Ah, the ice has ceased. Because of our absence. Gotcha, right, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So we're gonna need two little ice chunks, I think, to go in here. Un. Good, everything's processing. And it stopped again, that's annoying. Okay. Yeah, I, I did try to get over my fear of the ocean, but ultimately it's just like, it's a bit too much, quite frankly. Okay, good. Production's back up. Whew. Weird. I paddled before, I like it a lot. That's where you stand on the, uh, the board, right? That looks really cool. I've never had any waters near me, uh, like, calm enough to ever be able to do that. But my god, that looks so much fun. Also, our oceans here in New Zealand are salted and sub-Antarctic, so um, they're about negative one degrees, which is pretty funny for a liquid, but the salt, like, lowers... Yeah, it lowers the freezing temperature of, of our ocean over here in Dunedin, New Zealand. We also have a lot of swells, we have a lot of black skies, storms come in real fast. I've had a couple of thunderstorms that have started while I was on a surfboard. Like, I got out there, waited for a wave, it would be completely sunny to the point where I would have burns on my neck. And then out of just absolute nowhere, I'd be like surfing a single wave, which you don't even get to do for very long. You get to do it for like 15 seconds if you're really good at it. And then just thunderstorm. Straight over here, out of literally nowhere. I live in Idaho, there is no ocean, a lot of lakes. Oh, that's sick, I love that. I stepped on a jellyfish when I was little, on top didn't sting me, scared the hell out of me though. Yeah, I, I've, I've had a couple of um, jellyfish spines in me as well. I think I got lucky with that as well, because they, they weren't necessarily, I wouldn't call them painful. Like, they were really uncomfortable, and uh, my skin like uh, puffed up and flamed up a lot, but I, I wouldn't have called it painful necessarily. Uh, we've got this bone, we've got this bone. Where is that goddamn quest? I'm certain we picked one up from the city, right? Maybe we didn't. Okay, let's go hand in that other quest at the other little city, and maybe she'll give us something a little bit better to do. Maybe the other guy will give us a bigger quest as well. I don't know much about Idaho. I know it is landlocked, but I, I don't know much about it. Although, in a way, you probably would rather live there because there's sun here where I live. We are sub-Antarctic. It's, it's technically subtropical, but th there's no tropical weather whatsoever. There's no tropical bushes. It's just lush vegetation that can survive um, winters of frosts and stuff like that. A uh, lot, lot, of, lot of storms brew here. In fact, we've actually got one brewing now, so I'm probably going to have to go and uh, pick up my girlfriend Yintzet pretty soon. Uh, but until then, hygienic. Oh, I don't think I mentioned, by the way, we, yesterday, no, two days ago, two days ago, I was driving through this revolting black sky storm um, here in Dunedin to drop off Yinset to work uh, early in the morning, and I saw this guy on the sidewalk, and I didn't get to see him for long because I drove past him, but this guy was struggling with an umbrella and the sheer forces of the wind. And what this umbrella did, it was uh, it was like flicking up and down. You know how they go like inside out every, uh, and then flick back in in really big, bad windstorms? Well, this guy very clearly wasn't from here, and he was struggling to get his umbrella to stay inwards. And finally, he got it to come inwards, and it slapped him across the face so hard that it left this gigantic red mark across his face. <laughs> and he looked around to see if anybody saw him. And I did. I saw him. He thinks that no one saw him. I saw him. I saw it happen. So the guy walking around the town these days with this giant line across his face right here, uh, I, uh, whoever you are, I saw it happen. I saw it happen, and believe me, buddy, it looked painful. Sweet Jesus, it looked painful. Like, half of his face was pink. A big, like, almost like a cut. Crazy. Are there bones for the museum? How many exhibits are there? There's a single exhibit, and yeah, there are bones for it. We can put it in. I went to a lagoon yesterday. It was fun. Oh, man, I'm jealous of that as well. Even our lagoons here are kind of like um, where mosquitoes go to have families. So we can't really go near lagoons. Oh, yeah, that guy, that guy. Uh, so I had completely forgotten about that by about lunchtime, right? And when I went to bed that night, my brain was all like, hey, remember this thing? Remember this thing you saw in real life? And in this dream, I had filmed it and I had established an entire career off of making funny edits of this guy getting smacked in the face by an umbrella. Like 400 bucks a video kind of stuff. And uh, my dream was literally me sitting there for what felt like a year, just editing this one video into things over and over and over again with like trending music. And I, I sat there by the end of the dream like, I hate this. 
I hate this so much. I hate recycling memes for, for money. Like, I looked at my phone and, and, and the dream, of course, and I had like 10 grand sitting in my bank account from the uh, revenue of just editing this guy getting slapped in the face. And I couldn't spend it because I was dreaming. So I woke up and it was a bit of a nightmare, actually. But still, I could see a, a bunch of remixes of some guy getting slapped in the face by an umbrella. Uh, Quest wasn't there, by the way. Quest wasn't at that other place. Lagoon is a water and amusement park. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's really neat, actually. I haven't seen a lot of um, American amusement parks. I went to uh, Cali for a month. Uh, for some sad circumstances, Yun Siet's uh, grandfather was quite sickly and uh, we were trying to help tidy up his estate before he, um, he, he went to the great beyond. But I did get the luxury of a month in California, regardless of the circumstances, and I fell in love with that place over there. It's warm, you can get away with uh, wearing a singlet all day and you don't burn necessarily. We have a hole above the ozone layer where I live, so you don't have a choice here. Uh, what else is there? The scale of everything was not daunting necessarily. It was just really, really nice to be around. So many options. Like it was a capitalist stream, and I'm a, I'm a shameful you capitalist at heart. Jesus, my dude, are you sh taking the piss? <laughs> that is a big ruby. We can't even polish gems yet. My God, it's in Utah. Oh, Utah sounds pretty cool, actually. I've heard good things about Utah. I haven't heard much about Utah, but I've heard good things regardless. Okay, I still gotta look for this dickhead who gave us this quest. I'm certain we had a quest. Is it this lady here? Maybe? Hello? I'd like you to make me something. Okay, you've got a creepy voice. I'll do it anyway, sure. A 36 kilo iron bar for literally a pittance. Sure. Hopefully his quest is gonna maybe grow a little bit so we don't have to uh, constantly worry about a pittance. This lady also wanted something, didn't she? I need something specific. Oh, she wanted this dagger. Great. I thought she offered us something when we went up to her last time. Maybe it was a bug. Uh, there it is. 95 kilo dagger. Here you go, lady. Is your lady's name really Yinsen? What is your name? I'm Yinsen. I'm Yinsen. She's Yinset. Thank you. I, I kind of want to, like... Even if I don't necessarily hide a lot of my life from... My viewers, I understand that a lot of people in my life probably don't want to be harassed by viewers, so I'd, I'd, I tend to uh, kind of cover up their names whenever I get a chance to. Although I'm saying that, her name is Sam. She's been on the channel a bunch of different times. Hello there, sir. Are you the necklace guy? I'll trade you. Uh, I could probably do that, actually. Yeah. That's not so bad. A nine kilo... Oh, we need logic to do the ruby, though. Oh, okay. So we, uh, we are now actually looking at the issues. What else was awesome about California? It was the sun, it was the culture, loved it. The food, oh my god, the food in America. Holy crap, it is good. Taco Bell, $2 burrito, right, has crispy chicken, a bunch of vegetables, a bunch of sauces, every single piece of it tasted so good. Here in Dunedin, New Zealand, our Taco Bell is boiled chicken on black beans with no spices, no rice, and if you don't like it, uh, piss off. There's no competition except Nando's, who for some stupid reason do the exact same thing. So Taco Bell, mmm, delicious. I could live in America for four bucks a day. Which here in New Zealand, you can't even live for 20 bucks a day. Uh, we have such a cost of living crisis, it's ridiculous. Like four bucks just being Taco Bell, I suppose. And I'd probably also still stay this buff because I'm pretty active. Damn, yeah, it's good, huh? What else? Uh, baseball. I went to the batting cages there uh, over in Cali. Loved it. Uh, the guy running the cages as well came up, saw me uh, take a couple of swings. I'd never played baseball before. I just went to the batting cages to see what it was like. I played cricket for three years and I was a really good batsman. So that probably translated well. But I was taking a couple of swings at these balls and I was cracking every single one of them. A couple of them got stuck in the, in the uh, metal netting at the top of the cages. It's pretty cool. And uh, the guy who was running the cages came over and asked which team I played for. And I said, oh, I don't, I don't play for a team. Uh, let's deliver these bones, actually. Just while it's on, on the mind. That's what team I played for. And I said, I'm not even from this country, my man. <laughs> they said, oh, you should apply. Our team desperately needs some decent players. So uh, yeah, that was cool. I got invited to a, um, to a baseball team over there just by uh, fiddling around in some cages. That's sorry. Oh, yeah, the boiled chicken. It's revolting, isn't it? it I don't know why, but Southern New Zealand is kind of defined by piss poor middle management, and as a consequence, frontline staff, frontline etiquette, frontline um, service, it all pays the cost of bad middle management. 
Like, uh, it's very obvious that it's just the supply chains that are an issue, and quite obviously a skill issue, because if you're boiling chicken, why don't you have a deep fryer? Why, why is there any deep fryer? I know Japanese places that do better fried chicken than than, than uh, Taco Bell here in, in Dunedin. Okay. I think we're going to need one more piece of tail or two. I literally cannot tell. There's so many cool things. Oh, the pollution in America also was beautiful. Like, a lot of people talk about America being all, like, a polluted cesspool. But the skies are neon pink and orange at night, and that... You don't get that here in New Zealand. Here in New Zealand, you just get black clouds, and maybe if you're lucky, some rain. That's it. Aotearoa, uh, the Maori name for New Zealand, translates to land of the long white cloud. And down here in Dunedin, we don't get white clouds. We get black clouds, like thick black, nasty looking clouds. The ones that look like they will pull a knife and ask you for your wallet. Like that, those kind of clouds. And then when they're gone, the black ice comes out. Oh yes, love the black ice. Okay. We have a serious problem with food skyrocketing here. When did you visit Kelly? That would have been in... Probably... About this time in 2022. This time... This time in 22. It was pretty good there. It was, it was really good. I loved it there. Loved it there. Absolutely adored it there. Although, we weren't in the big cities. We didn't go to San Francisco. We didn't go to... What was the other one? LA. We didn't go to uh, the Los Angeles. Which is a little bit of a shame. I wanted to see Evike in person because I was uh, really big into my airsoft uh, back when we were back when we were going over to the States. Like the England, just rain and sadness. Oh, yeah. Um, we're settled by the Scottish. Uh, less so by the English, more so by the Scottish. The English settled up north. There's this uh, very famous Billy Connolly joke where the Scottish kind of... They came to Dunedin, New uh, no, they settled in Wellington, New Zealand, and the English were all like, North to the sun! And the Scots were all like, Let's follow the drizzle! And then they ended up down here in Dunedin, New Zealand, and that's that's pretty much the, uh, the history <laughs> of Dunedin, and it's not actually all of that inaccurate either. Let's repair those filters. Pretty bang on. But yeah, it was great. Uh, we went to a little small city. We visited Fresno because the inset has got a little bit of family there, but it's too, it, Fresno's too, like, it's, it's too white. I, I, like, I don't want to bring race into it or, or give anybody any stereotypical connotations, but it's, it's so white. It's such a white place. Like, it's got picket fences everywhere and uh, everything's clean. There's lawns in between all of the islands and stuff. Islands, not as in, like, physical ocean islands, but the kind of, like, the patches and roundabouts and uh, intersections and stuff. Those are called islands here in New Zealand. Don't know what they're called in America. Sounds right, 2022. It's happened in the last year. The food thing. Really? Oh, you mean the food prices? Oh, that sucks, actually. That's really bad. I hope it's nothing like New Zealand. Because we've been in a cost of living crisis for about three years, and this year, our government actually acknowledged it. Wait, isn't that how long we've had the, the government for? Oh my god, did they cause it? Uh, national elections. NZ elections. Was it 2021? When was this? 2020. There was a 2023 general election. Oh my god! That's when the prices started getting absolutely terrifying! Oh, our idiots in Parliament! Oh, they, they failed to moderate the most basics of utilities of the country. Oh my god, it's full circle. These idiots crashed the uh, supermarket economy. economy. Fresno, San Jose, Modesta, Fairfield. Fresno, I visited there. Yen said has family there. It's not awful if you can afford it, but luckily her family does have some pretty high stations with some high pay. She comes uh, basically from a, a, a military background family, so uh, a, a, a comfortable amount of money. And her cousins also live pretty comfortably as well. One of them broke away and tried to live in San Francisco, and he hated it. His rent there was 2000 US dollars, I think a fortnight, which is insane to me. Oh my God. If you were making 2000 figures a fortnight in New Zealand, you have a, high, a very high paying job. So there's got to be a lot of money that goes through San Francisco for you to be able to live there, quite frankly. It's insane. 
Okay, well, thanks to the government for uh, causing that food crisis. I didn't make that connection until literally the second. God damn it, National. They suck ass. They suck ass real bad. Yeah. No, we were quite lucky. Uh, we stayed in a little town called... What was it called? It's not Moderna. Moderna is a brand of vaccines, isn't it? Moderna is kind of... They make vaccines. For COVID. We'll turn that back on. Wait, was that on? It was on. Merced. It was called Merced. And I absolutely adored that place. It had a population of around about 100,000 people, which is actually very similar to where I live. Um, if you take away all the students that come to Dunedin, New Zealand, each year, that's 35,000 people of the 125,000 people who actually do live here annually. You get 90,000 people. Merced was j just slightly bigger than that, if you take away the students, because the students are always going to leave. They're, they're not staying here. They're, they're basically just coming here to drink and burn couches in the streets. And uh, I'm not joking about that either. That's actually a big cultural thing that we have here, burning couches in the streets. Why isn't the conveyor belt going? Do we need to feed the ice machine? I think we do. But yeah, yeah, Merced was amazing. I loved it so much. Small town America, it's got a lot going for it. Small towns are awesome. I love small towns. Oh my god, frame drop much. Okay, we need like a little platform just down here as well. Oh, that one missed. Weird. Uh, maybe there is a platform that we can kind of like pilfer from up here. Maybe we don't need that one there because we probably need to start up this goddamn conveyor belt as soon as we can every single time. Here we go. Done. Ooh. Merced and Kelly is full marijuana. Yep. Oh yeah, there's a lot of weed in Merced. Our rent is twelve hundred. Is that a fortnight? Is that a month? Because uh, America's really weird. We do it weekly here in New Zealand, which uh, is a gift and a curse. It means that you can kind of like just guess your finances on the fly, but also at the same time you're basically living paycheck to paycheck, and there's no chance for savings when there's weekly pay. All I want is to live comfortably. Yeah, me too. Honestly, I don't need a mansion. I fully agree. I'm very happy with like a very very small space, but I am dating a woman, and I love this woman. So I want the best for her. That's what I want. Like, I don't think I've ever mentioned this. Every night for the last, like, months since I started going to the gym, I've been cooking full course meals for her while I just kind of, like, pick away at the ingredients while I'm cooking because uh, I just want to make sure that she's, you know, fed and stuff like that. It's monthly. Monthly 1,200. That'll be 300 a week. That's actually cheap by New Zealand standards. Although currency conversion would probably put that at around about 450 a week. If you're living with uh, two other people, that'd be around about the average here in New Zealand. If you're splitting the rent with two other people, that'd be fine. What a headache, pay your rent every week. It's not that bad. It's honestly not that bad. It's because when you get your money every week, when you get your paycheck every week, you can just set an automatic payment to just fire and forget. And then you just don't look at your bank account on the day that you get paid, because that's when all your bills go out and it'll depress you. I had one... Um, when I was working full-time as a builder, there was one week I pulled 50 hours. That was earning minimum wage at the time, which was 1650. So that would have been... Uh, I don't know. Oh, my pride! It was, it was a substantial amount of money. But after, like, rent and stuff and bills and stuff uh, went out, the next day I looked at my bank account, I had, like, 150 bucks for the week. I was like, oh, no! But I think I had to pay for a really, really big uh, brake replacement at that time, though. So, bit of an outlier. Huge resources are being thrown into this bucket, by the way. It's pretty crazy. I live with three people. Oh, yeah, we'd probably consider that to be a little bit expensive. I have basically moved a mountain here in New Zealand. I have found a place that charges roughly $800 a week in rent, which is pretty much what people usually pay here in New Zealand with, like, a couple of people. But it's got many bedrooms, so we've got... Five people living here and we split that and that ends up being 160 a week in rent which is crazy cheap it's highly unlikely you're gonna find that anywhere in the, like a four block radius around us you, you're just not gonna see that um so i also manage all of the utilities and power and and stuff like that as well water's free of course so cheaper um since i've got a lot of spare time 
for the day, so I crunched a lot of numbers for the flat, and I have basically worked out that we are nominal at $210 per week. So that is our rent weekly. It's really good. That's what I do too. When I cook for my lady and baby, I pick it at two. By the time it's done, I'm full and they get to eat. Yeah, I know. It's like a, it's, it's a sacrifice of love, right? It's, it's one of those things where you're just like, you know, as long as they get something nice out of it, the whole experience was worth it. My dad makes 26 an hour and works 12 hour shifts on and off every two or three days. What does he do? What does your dad do for a living? That is a strange structure. Here in New Zealand, we've got like, um, our shift work is kind of like, we've got AM and PM slots. So AM slots usually start at about 5 AM and they go on to around about one or 2 PM. That's a single shift. And the afternoon shifts generally start at roughly 2 PM, go on until about 12 at night. Which is a rough one. Uh, my best friend Carl, who lives with me, he went from the morning shift to the afternoon shift, uh, starting literally this Monday. And I don't know if he's coping very well, because now he's sleeping through all the sunlight and uh, he's, he's up all night, when it's all really cold and miserable. But it's pretty rough. It's pretty rough. I don't miss it. I don't miss shift work, honestly. I'm so lucky that I got crippled beyond measure. Maintenance on a big potato company. A big, oh, that makes sense, actually. That makes a lot of sense. He's got to be like a foreman, right? Or is it just maintenance as in, like, engineering? Like, you, uh, you, you go and do something when, when, you, uh, when, when something pops up. But you have to be on site. Is that the deal? He loves his job but works nights. <laughs> is he Irish? <laughs> oh, what a horrible joke. What a, what a horrible day to have a joke. I'm sorry for any Irishmen out there. I do love that the reputation of Irish people loving potatoes comes from the, the potato famine, where they didn't have potatoes. So, you know, the the joke, the joke kind of falls flat unless you uh, you stereotype the the schema, right? That's pretty cool. Um, we've got a bit of a work shortage here in New Zealand at the moment. Uh, we're importing quite a lot of labour from overseas, which is not amazing. Well, I mean, it's, it's good for people that get the jobs, and of course they'll end up getting citizenships out of it, but it's it's not amazing for uh, anybody locally who would potentially have been paid more. But that's just what happens under a right-wing government here in New Zealand. Wages always go down. Graveyard is very hard on mental and physical health. I've done it a few times. Yeah, I fully agree. He's a night owl. Yeah, so is my friend. So is my friend. I do think he's probably going to go back to the morning shift, though. I don't think he's going to stick with the graveyard shift, because the graveyard shift is just, quite frankly... A, a little bit heinous. And it's cold. It's always cold. It's always cold. I've also done the graveyard shift a, a few times. I used to work security for a while. But because of the martial arts, right? And I usually got bumped up to kind of like the high priority events because of my experience and also my ability to talk somebody down from a violent situation. Silver Tongue always overcomes fists. It always will. Always has, always will. Night shift is, is crazy. I had to do street patrols uh, from like, oh, what were they? They were 6 p.m. to 4 a.m. No, 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. Uh, that was uh, when I was uh, doing like public night patrols out in the city. And my God, some of the stuff that I saw out there in the cold, it was rough. Yes, 12k steps a night. Yeah, it's, that does not surprise me, honestly. Uh, the worst night that I had when I was doing security I was walking around, and I kid you not, it was 3.55 a.m. And the reason we stop working at 4 a.m. is because that's when all of the bars and uh, liquor license places closed for the evenings. And when I was out, when I was out at 3.55 a.m., I was just with my partner, who was a, a bit of a... I, I don't want to say sheep, but he wasn't exactly made to fight. He was, he was just kind of like one of those uh, watch and report kind of guys. I ended up... Standing in the centre of the town, which we call the Octagon, because it's in the shape of an octagon surrounded by bars and stuff, and all of the bars started closing, I watched this one guy, huge guy, almost seven foot tall, built more muscle, way more muscle than this. Huge amounts of muscles, tattoos everywhere except for his neck and face. He walked up to this girl at the back of this bar, and he just slugged her in the face, like right across the cheek. And she went down like a sack of bricks. And then the bouncers saw a woman get punched didn't see who did it, they just saw that uh, a girl got punched. And this lit, this girl could have had a, a broken nose, for all I knew. So these bouncers just started grabbing people and literally tossing them by their collars out the bar. 
which led to a full-on street fight of 30 people in the octagon five minutes before I was supposed to knock off. And two things went into my head, right? First was, oh my god, I have to stop this. I have to actually stop this. And because I was wearing high vis, I was able to just get away with, like, walking in between two people who were about to slug at each other and just sticking my hands in front of them and they would just disengage. Some of them would get back into the fight. Some of them would stop fighting. But the second thing that I thought was, I am literally about to stop working. I am not paid for this. I'm not paid for any of this whatsoever. And I was there until 5.30 a.m. cleaning up the garbage that had happened that night. All of the bouncers basically lied and said, uh, no, nothing happened. I had to call the police as well. I had my partner call the police while I was diffusing things. Um, the bouncers essentially lied and said, oh, we didn't see anything, because technically they committed a bunch of assault, and uh, the only person who was willing to say anything was this one girl who had blood pissing out of her nose, and she was sticking with me simply because I was the only one willing to listen. These police had a half an hour response time, and it took so long. Just like, oh, it was such a mess. So I got off an hour and a half uh, unpaid after that. Uh, that sucked. That sucked. Security is so boring. I had all of my certifications at one point. I never got cert. I I never got certifications. That's the thing. I never got given any certifications. All I had was a license under the company to manhandle someone if I ever needed to, and I only had to do that like twice in the like three months that I worked security. And I I worked big gigs. I worked a couple of real big gigs. A lot of stadium work. Um, a lot of football stuff. Fortunately, I didn't have to chase after any streakers which was awesome. What My boss had to chase after a streaker once and he tried to tackle this streaker and he got his face right in the ass crack of this poor streaker. Oh my God, there were photos going around in the newspaper of that as well. That was so funny. <laughs> I think the, um... Oh, uh, the uh, article was titled Wanted an eyeful, got, an, got a mouthful, something like that. It was really funny. We're quite crass down here in southern New Zealand. It's way down south. Real funny though, but... I never really got to see any action. The only times I really had to handle somebody is when they were, uh, you know, kind of like at a bar and I was just bouncing at a bar, which I shouldn't have really been doing. I shouldn't have been doing it. I just worked for a really, really loose uh, security company. They sucked ass. I stopped. Ah, the filter's probably broken. All right, I am probably out of time, which is why I ended that with uh, story time. I gotta go pinky and set up. I'm, I'm almost certain of it. I probably should do it. The clouds are kind of looming, and I've got a missed call. So I'm going to shoot off. Thank you, everybody, so much for watching. There, uh, right up here, you're going to find the playlist for Hygienia that I have made. Right up here, you're going to find another playlist that I think you'd really enjoy. Down in the description of this video, you're going to find a link to my Discord, where you can talk with me and my community whenever you want. That's how social media works. And until I make the next episode, or you catch the next stream, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye!